All right, we are back with another episode of Speedruns from the Crypt, the bi-weekly horror hotfix, which is pretty much a mini horror block every two weeks. Welcome back, everyone, and I hope that you're all having a great week. This week was Valentine's Day, the holiday of love, and there's a lot to be said about Valentine's Day, and really any excuse to have a holiday-themed show is always a fun one with me. So this week's theme is obviously going to match that. It's going to be romantic horror, or tales of romantic horror. Before we do go on into that, though, I just want to say that if you have any ideas of your own recurring shows or one-off events for GDQ, feel free to go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix to submit your ideas. We're looking for shows to fill out the hotfix schedule, so be sure to submit if you'd like to become a showrunner, kind of like this. All right, we're going back into the theme of the show. I hope that you've all been having a wonderful day so far. And the games we're going to be having on deck for this week are all going to be focusing on the idea of love to one degree or another. Although, given that it's horror-based, this isn't always exactly the best thing, but it's certainly fitting, isn't it? All right, without further ado, we're going to be going to our first game, which is going to be Catherine Full Body with Crispy Hanako. Take it away. Hey, everybody. Look at these lovely ladies. Too bad Valentine's Day is over, isn't it? So, I'm joined here by Shaz, who is one of the best competitive players when it comes to Catherine. To say hello, Shaz. Uh, hopefully, he can help fill you guys in on the story while I try to go through this and some of the mechanics. Uh, also, Waifu Wars, go ahead, go nuts. Everybody's opinions are good. Anyway, we are going to start a new game. Easy. On Remix. This mode is... Recommended for those looking for a fresh experience. Thanks, narrator. Anyway, we're gonna have these Tetris shaped blocks. It's gonna be a little bit more fun. Anyway, time will start in three, two, one, go. Very well. Please enjoy the world of Catherine Fullbody in comfort. Has it really been that long? It honestly doesn't seem that long. Five. Classic speedrun style, we skip. Classic speedrun strats, we skip every cutscene we can. Except these. Because later these will actually have some story plot to it. Anyway, we're going to go on this little tutorial level. It's going to bother us a couple times with these little pop-ups, but it's not going to be too big of a deal. Can you hear me on the stream? Tetris blocks. There's all those blocks of the same color within the same area. Right, test, test. Hey, can you hear me? Just do that. Right, I got Sorry this isn't the most riveting right now, we're kind of at the beginning of the game, there's not really much to talk about besides survive and climb. There's not yeah, it's much. pretty straightforward, I think. Um, it's very Cubertian physics. Um, we're watching first time. You'll also notice a lot of Roadrunner physics too, because blocks will stay hanging in the air for a little bit as well. And much like whose line, the prizes don't matter. Okay, can I please skip this cutscene? <laughs> Very hard tech to hit. I'm only mashing alternate buttons. Can't be that bad. Right. Now that uh, things have settled a little bit here, uh, I know we uh, did the first level of the game. For anyone who may just be joining on in or doesn't know much about the world of Catherine, what's the general goal of each level that we're trying to achieve? Uh, survive. By playing reverse Tetris. Right. It's totally accurate. <laughs> so you start at the bottom of the tower and you're just trying to climb up. Uh, it's a speed run, so we won't really have any issues with, like, running out of time, but the floor actually slowly falls out from under you. So, uh, Catherine's kind of like notoriously difficult, so I'm sure that probably people who have played on their own uh, probably die fairly frequently. Um, 
But you go through a series of levels, kind of like, kind of like that tutorial one. But uh, when you're actually playing through some of the other stages, there will be some boss levels as well. Also, pro tip to anybody: do not talk about, do not talk to your girlfriend like this. This is really bad. No, it's Valentine's Day with the thumb on. Also, don't do this! Oh. <laughs> Never save. Never save. Pause. Especially if you're running this on a hard drive, do not save. Wait, who's this? We don't know who this is. Although that sheep in purple is pretty dapper. Oh yeah. All wearing hats. Loving outfit. Loving the jockstrap. Look rings on his eyes that we never saw. Uh, yeah, so I think we're still first kind of in levels. the tutorial. That's a neat mechanic that's new to uh, Cool Body is that whenever you're spidering, whenever you're hanging, the blocks actually glow where you can touch. So that's really helpful and a really nice quality of life change. Yeah, especially when you're behind the tower and you don't know where you are. Oh yeah. There's another quality of life that I have turned off where it actually turns the camera around because that is nauseating. Yeah, they kind of they kind of botched that one a little bit. <laughs> it's very jarring. I definitely want to say I love the idea of uh, looking at the checkpoint and then just seeing it like, oh, we're just gonna ignore that and immediately just beat the level. Yeah, just blow right by that. <laughs> Also, I have a question from Chad if that's all good. Uh, Nameless asks, are these levels randomly generated? Uh, no. Every level is static exactly the same. Which is really good if you want to try to blindfold this run. You can, but I wouldn't suggest it. Especially when we start getting into the bosses, you really don't want to be blindfolded when they attack. Uh, I know uh, one thing I can actually mention right now about Catherine that I'm aware of is um, every single level uh, introduces new forms of blocks, right? Uh, every stage, yes. Every, like yeah. every major numbered stage. So this stage in particular is introducing crap blocks and it's also going to be introducing heavy blocks in the boss stage we're about to come up to. Spoiler. But uh, yeah, it just slowly introduces mechanics. It's not like you're overwhelmed, though. Yeah, it, uh, it does, the game does a pretty good job. Remix mode, the only thing that is special is that every stage is going to feature the Tetris blocks, but otherwise you can start to slowly see that, oh, there's crack blocks now. Uh, you'll see some spike blocks, and then yeah, every stage will introduce one new mechanical top of each other. And oh, towards should... the end, it combines them all. Uh, should we explain what each block does? Obviously, the white block is just kind of a normal block, doesn't really do anything. The cat block, you can only step on it twice before it disappears forever. And the heavy block takes about three times as long as it And then, like I poorly mentioned earlier, the multicolored Tetris blocks uh, move as one singular unit. Some would yeah. say it's an absolute unit, but... I think one block type that we won't see in this is, this is are the laser ones. Here, it's Do not die. So this is the first boss. You can't really see it because we're kind of running away real quick. It just looks like someone's angry with the food. That could be anyone. But apparently she found us. 
I don't know how she did that, but... Everything on the screen and make it just except for the Tetris blocks because those aren't affected for some reason. Special kind of song. Oh, just to go say hi, boss. Hi, boss. How you doing? Okay, see ya. So what am I doing? Honestly, what am I doing? Jeez. There we go. I wanted to say hi to the boss. <laughs> How could this happen? She just looks so lonely. So I guess this does open the question as well. So if all the levels tend to be um, pre-generated, does this game have a lot of RNG in it? Or any at all? Uh, the original game had a lot of RNG on the last stage. And then you also have the RNG with how the bosses attack you as well. Also, Cap of Heaven. Uh, but in this game, they basically nerfed all the RNG. Especially on this game. The bosses don't attack you. All the randomness is essentially removed because it's actually mapped to a sequence. And... So thanks for getting the DLC. I now have an extra pop up to deal with. One thing I love about the run is that, um, because I know the game wants to throw you between the block puzzles and a lot of like lore in the bar where you can make decisions, you can kind of talk to the people. There's a lot of dialogue, but you don't really get to see it during the speed run because you just leave the bar each time. Yeah, they just kind of speak similar shit here. Because you're jumping from the next lines. Yeah, all the fast skips. Yeah. But yeah, it, also, the, the bar sequences normally play out like in a really almost dating sim kind of way, but mostly just to talk to the other patrons who do show up uh, at the landings of the nightmare. Right, I got it. Really. Right, I got it. So we're at the torture chamber that sheep just exploded. Uh, I'm scared. Oh, it isn't oh, worrying. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, 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 okay. Silence over. Apparently he got something. I don't know what he got, though. Kind of skip the explanation. Yeah, the top. <laughs> I mean, I didn't get it. Kind of just gave me a staircase. Very nice of the game to do that. Very. Well, well. This is a surprise. So the other part of the game are these questions in the confessionals. Um, that normally these determine this little bar that sways one way or the other, and that's going to determine your ending. Yeah, they, they kind of like playing 20 questions with this game. Actually, there's a question uh, for the questions. Uh, do they... Do they have any impact on speed routing? So is getting particular answers going to be faster? Or are particular ending going to be quicker? Um, I guess, is there a faster girl to choose? Uh, faster girl, no. There are faster questions, though. You want to just pray to the RNG gods that you get the questions that are always 50-50 answers. And there's not many. Because in the scene immediately after where it's charting the meter and everything, if it's a 50-50 answer, it doesn't take as long to animate. So getting everything 50-50 is just like basically impossible. Wait, aren't those questions based on like the global player base of Catherine? Uh, when you're playing online, yes. 
in order to speed run this game and save some loading time, we play offline. Oh. Huh, I didn't know that. Which I know you uh, did a, a uh, what is all pet scenes run of this the other day. Uh, you'll notice that there aren't any little floating orbs where people have died. Yeah. Those are completely gone because I'm off like, offline. Yeah, they kind of did like a Dark Souls-ish kind of thing, right? Blood stains essentially. Where other people... Oh man, if they had Dark Souls in this thing where people actually came back and killed the sheep where they died, that'd be great. <laughs> Just uh, suddenly multiplayer. I do know, uh, shout outs to, uh, I guess, certain uh, parts of the Catherine community, because I know uh, Catherine's actually kind of weird because it's also a fighting game. Yeah. Yeah, there's some debate about that, but yeah. Um, yeah. I, I organize a lot of the Catherine multiplayer events. Just a bunch of blockheads, pretty much. Uh, it's got really fun multiplayer. Oh yeah, it's a good thing we needed to look at this boss, because it's kind of low. Uh... Oh. Ah. There she is. <laughs> There's at least something to be said about the bosses in this game. Yeah, they really let the, the horror parts kind of come through in the bosses, so it's kind of a shame that the speed run they're just stuck at the bottom the whole time. Or is that, uh, what is it? That weird title of a show is like, in this episode, the developer's undisguised finish. Or poorly hidden ah, finish, yes. I should say. I mean, with this game, it's not exactly wrong. Or I wouldn't even say it's really disguised. No, it's it's kind of out there, especially that one, just in your face. You got a mail. One thing that full uh, body added to the first half of the game, it added a lot of exposition and a lot of cutscenes that actually go back in time. Uh, to when Vincent and uh, Catherine with a K first started dating. So that's what some of the um, cutscenes that you know, we're skipping over are filling uh, place in right now. Is this Inquisition? Yeah. 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 I think Inquisition's the shortest one, right? Uh, in the original, yeah, the, yeah, Inquisition's the shortest stage. It only has two levels to it, so it has this interaction one and then the boss. But they ruined it in full body because on easy, we can't do the fun strat anymore. No, really? Yeah. Well, Is that the one where you break the entire stage? Yes. Oh. Aww. Say hello to the best item in the game. The drink. Oh. So what does Not the juice do? It allows you to climb two steps. Well, climb is a very loose term when you're being fisted in the air by a magical force. Yeah, so the juice has changed. In the original, you kind of like could climb two steps for a, a number of seconds. In this one, it's a use-based item, which also shows up in the uh, the Babel mode, the challenge stages, that mostly get unlocked after you beat the game. But uh, pretty much it lets you go up a number of steps. The normal drink is two, but there's I think there's also a three-step, too. Is that in uh, full body, or that, is it canned? That is canned. That is so in um, super, e quote unquote, super easy in the original language. Oh, I see. Yeah, I keep seeing it in chat. I hope this speedrun has you on the edge of your seats. <laughs> we need an edge counter to hear how many times they say it. Also, look, we're already on the next boss. Yep, this stage is really short. Also, I'm just gonna. Baby is the killer. I'm just gonna angle it downwards just so everybody can see it. Alright, I got it. 
Well, it is the killer. Our own speed run from the trip. Got it. Stuff I'm just gonna angle like this. I kind of know what's going on. That's the nice thing. All the stage is kind of being static, right? Yeah. I said now I gotta wait. Uh, I actually have a question I have really quick. Uh, with the item usages, like with the uh, the soda, uh, is there a particular time you're looking to use these? And in theory, could you hold it like, let's say, for like the entire game? Uh, no, the you can hold it between stages, but as soon as you wake up, you have to get it. So usually, you want to make the most of your usage per level. Yep. And honestly, a lot of the times I forget where I use them. From the last run, even so, it's just like, damn, whatever. There are optimal places to use them, but. Yeah, and some good uh, skips there, dude. <laughs> Double pause. Very cool. If only that would let me skip the next cutscene, too. Cap of Heaven. Kappa. Kappa Heaven's the best part. You got a mail. All right, I hope everybody is uh, nice and cozy because this next stage is going to get pretty cold. Yeah, coming up is the Quadrangle. It's the all-ice map. The gimmick there is that you slide on the ice blocks. Very original. Um, they're kind of dangerous Like if you get caught near the edge, because you'll just go right off and die. But not much of a problem in easy mode. Shaz, did you forget to emphasize the word edge in your sentence? Oh, I am so sorry. It's tiring in Catherine. <laughs> to keep track. Sweet! Sweet! on ice. I think it's cold. So, um, there are some gold bars littered around the map as well. If you're playing uh, the game for other reasons, you can see in the top right there's actually some step counter and some points that you acquire. And you can use the coins to actually buy items at the landing. Um, and then they also give you the trophy at the end of the level. And that is used to unlock some battle levels, depending on how many gold trophies you get and stuff. Uh, that was in the original. In this game, you just beat the game. You just get them all? Oh my goodness. Everything I know is, is outdated. <laughs> you got past the ice and made it to the floor. You smile a bit. Does he have ramp horns? Because he's a bit sheepish. So the ice blocks, how easy it is it to accidentally uh, die with them? Uh, very if there's a string in them. But as long as it was a single one and it's the last one you stood on, you're fine. So, for example, if I were to slide off this, I can't because I just can't be. But if there were two leading up to that, then yes, I would slide right off. It's rain. 
Yeah, in easy mode, they like to kind of uh, put the, the dark, heavy blocks on the outside, and that kind of uh, prevents you from accidentally sliding off. Uh, but in general, it's pretty easy to lose your footing and slip around. It was a sight to see. Got same. Oh wait, it's gone. What's up? What's up, sheep? Yeah, whenever you yeah, so walk over to some little boys on this side. Yeah, the the landings are really cool. Um, all those sheep there that have the you know custom thing like we saw the the police sheep, they are actually all patrons in the bar, and they don't have their memories uh, when they're awake, so you kind of. Uh, talk to them in the dreams and and help them. You can give them climbing techniques, and it's really cool, like bonding experience. And you also learn stuff too, and um, you can actually carry them through to the end. <laughs> all right, so I'll wait for the. Thanks, game. Uh, Dim's bride. Yeah, uh, totally. Don't know who this is. I actually don't, we've been skipping all these cutscenes. Right. We'll yeah, assume they're is... nice. I mean, a nice lady. She's got <laughs> flowers, how could she mean? Right? <laughs> you're just curious where you're going, there's nothing wrong with that. She's just being really protective. I just love how quick these go because I know like the actual game like makes the climbs and like, this really hard thing. Oh, Meanwhile, he's just like Vincent's just spamming up the uh, the tower. <laughs> oh yeah, there there's some sh movement going on for sure. <laughs> Normally, yeah, you're right. I mean, the game is extremely difficult. So it's really cool to, um, but it's hard. It's a it's a puzzle game, right? So once you kind of get that down, you can kind of map it pretty easily. Yeah. You got a mail. And seeing how uh, I've probably got about three hundred or so hours in the story mode. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're somewhat on autopilot once you remember the routes, right? Yeah, basically. The hands know what they gotta do. It also doesn't help that they really neutered the bosses in full body because they do not like to attack you on easy. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, oh, okay, this is definitely, like, very nice. The very generous. Dice should Thanks, know a Atlas. thing or two about this next stage. It's the, uh, fuck tower. It might be the wrong one, but he should know a thing or two about it. See, that's why it's a horror game. It has a clock tower. Those are the rules. Yeah. The gimmick on clock tower are these uh, bomb blocks. So you step on them and they start the timer. And uh, when the timer ends, they go boom. And everything around them that is red turns into a crack block. Um, you just have to be a little bit careful because they, they can like stack up pretty quickly and your your whole tower will kind of get a little bit flimsy. Yeah, and if you have a crack block uh, be bombed by a bomb block, then it just disappears. Right, it just eats already cracked blocks. It actually has a slight odd topic question, but I realize we haven't really gone over this yet. Um, what do the undoes and the pillows do? What are undoes? I don't right. Use those. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, pillows, they give you an extra undo, and undoes will, well, undo. Like this. One action gone. So if you make a mistake, you can make up to five mistakes in this, or undo your last five actions, so it's not that big a deal if you make a mistake. 
Yeah, the the pillows the pillow system was and the undo system was reworked from classic. In classic, you actually had like lives and get essentially a game over. Um, but in this, instead, the pillows, like Crispy said, they give you uh, undos, and you just have I think unlimited retries of the whole level. Yeah. Notice that there's the uh, autoplay button that's up in the top corner. Uh, no. Not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine it'd be fast even if you did autoplay, though. Oh, it's horrendously slow. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine. Remember how we said we're not supposed to walk on bomb blocks? Yeah, I'm about to break that. Right, not for the faint of heart or the inexperienced, but if you know what you're doing, go for it. Who's ready for Catherine. fireworks? <laughs> Catherine's a 3D game. I saw you go in the background there. Actually, another question, I guess, kind of related to the bomb blocks. Um, and I guess some, it's funny because I guess some of the questions I do know the answer to, but they definitely help with the chat experience here. Is it possible to mess up a stage and break it enough to where you can't beat the game? Uh, yeah. It, it certainly is possible. Um, a lot of the stages, especially like the ones that we're seeing, are designed to make that kind of difficult, especially with the undos. Um, but in general, yeah, it's actually very easy to set up a lot of the stages in an unwinnable position. Especially with bomb blocks. I'm actually gonna go get this drink real quick. Ah, okay. Put a spider around, yeah. We spidering don't really do that a lot. Yeah, we only go up. <laughs> or we try to only go up. The side is acceptable as long as it's useful. We really should have been having the edge counter. Yeah. Also, there's a question in chat about the link blocks. Yeah, so the link blocks are part of the remix mode, and they're the uh, the Tetris thing uh, that Crispy Hinako described earlier, where they all move as one unit. Absolute unit. An absolute unit. Yeah, the the tricky thing to wrap your head around with the Tetris blocks is that, like, if one part of them connects on an edge, the whole figure connects on the edge. Uh, and then also, if you have like a T-shaped Tetris block, you can't spider across the middle because like you can only spider across the top part. Yeah, like the, so it's very the 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 golden edge. As soon as there's a golden edge edge on it, you can spider across it. Oh boy, everybody's favorite easy stage. The ants. I thought this game was oh, about God. sheep, not ants. I mean, they're they're closely related to uh, sheep. You know, part of the same. Right. Something. I, I don't know much of biology. <laughs> Dave, jump, I don't even chat. know. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're they're degrees in separation, right? Ants and sheep. They're. G I think I think of the word genus. I think that's what I'm trying to think about. Does that mean that the ants cheated on their wives? The queen? No, never. Maybe they're like the anti-sheep. Yeah, I think that there is a plot point about the ants are like the witch's uh, eyes or something like that. Like, it's kind of strange. Uh, they show up in Vince's apartment though because uh, he has a cake that he doesn't eat. <laughs> What is he on a diet? He's already skin as a bone. Yeah, but but also I like how the because um this game is a very like someone asked earlier is this a movie or is this a game? And this game is a lot more movie than game. Funny enough, the, the uh, run's still like a good hour um like let's say hour five minutes or so, but 
I think in the actual cutscenes, like, the ant show up after, like, a day of him having a cake in his apartment. Yeah. You're, I think you're right. I think the timeline on that is right. It's, it's very strange. I have to wonder what kind of apartment is this guy living in, where ants show up after literally a day after leaving a cake out. I don't know, but he lives in an apartment where his door sounds like a submarine bulkhead. It squeaks like nobody's business. Avoid the bus. Remember this one from like two stages ago? I don't. That was too fast. Also, I got an answer. Apparently, the word I was looking for is uh, sheep and ants are part of the same kingdom. Yes, the animal. Right. <laughs> the animal kingdom? Yeah. yeah. As broad there as it can go. get. <laughs> yeah, this time we got baby, but with a chainsaw. Horror um, games, everybody. Yeah. Normally, when he attacks, he does like a really cool oh, he's like, actually, couple yeah, he thing. Actually does oh, it. does he? Oh, okay. He's breaking the stage in half. Yeah, he chops up the stage. He shoots actual chainsaws that like follow you around. Oh, okay, you're, you're, you're giving Junior too much credit here. He doesn't do that. Oh, what? Not anymore. Not that easy. Ay, ay, ay. Weren't kidding with the easy mode stuff, man. <laughs> hey, give him some credit. He's at least cutting the stage. Yeah. Uh, can I get this? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Nice. What a save. If, if a Tetris block gets cut, the remainders, I think, just turn to normal white blocks, right? Yeah, exactly, yes. Pro tip. Don't Sometimes get, it can be useful. Don't get your Tetris blocks cut, they'll just turn you under blocks. <laughs> oh, apparently there's also another clarification in chat that apparently uh, ants can find sugar in less than a day, so I guess it's not that unrealistic. Ah, huh, okay. I guess if there were already ants somewhere. I like to believe there's already ants there, and the, the cake just kind of showed them. The beacon, right. it shines. Go to it. Pause. Pause. Now's our time. <laughs> awesome, we don't and have to go cake. for Rin. Nice. Everybody who went to go Pause. likes Rin, uh, sorry about your luck, but uh, this is not the speedrun for you. Although I think there is actually a Rin speedrun that adds the uh, extra series of levels at the very Pause. end of the game. Oh yeah, there's like six of them. Which one do you want? Yeah, the the categories for Catherine Full Body are uh, are elaborate. <laughs> Pretty much like everything is is a thing. Uh, but Catherine, I think Full Body has 15 endings. Uh, it's got a lot. It's got a lot. <laughs> four, Definitely over a dozen. Four for C Catherine, four for K Catherine, two for Vincent being by himself, three for Rin. Yeah. So, do the math. I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. There's a number. There's certainly a number of endings. Um, so this is my favorite enough. stage. This is my absolute favorite stage because there's so many of them, but they take like 10 seconds. And I am not kidding. Yeah. This part's really cool. So as a question I'm seeing in chat, um, what are exactly the differences between uh, full body and the classic Catherine? Uh, well, any there, oh. uh, there are a lot of gameplay differences that are fairly minor, uh, but they add up. And story-wise, there's there's a whole, whole lot. Um, Story-wise, I mean, we have a whole new character with Rin, and each of the original girls, they get a different ending as well. Um, so there's there's quite a bit. Uh, not only that, but there's also content. 
So there, this is easy remix mode, but there is uh, a remix difficult, a remix version of every difficulty, as well as the original. So it is pretty much like the original game with twice as much content. Let, um, let me just say the achievement to get all golden prizes. It's 192 stages. I won't let that sink in. <laughs> it's it's incredible. So I think that if you played the original game, you know, 11 years ago or, or heard of it, and you never gave it a shot, or you did, and you're thinking, oh, it's full body worth it. I think so. It goes on sale fairly frequently, and you get like twice as much content. So if you liked it originally, I think full body has something for you. <laughs> And we haven't really been touching on the story that much, but the game itself is, um, ah, jeez. The story is kind of anime-ish, if you're, well, it's, it's fairly heavy anime stylized, but, um, this is my favorite stage, by the way. They, they, this item takes all the challenge. Hmm. That 3x3, three three, yeah. Dude, that item is so crazy good. <laughs> and it's over. Oh my god. You weren't kidding. That pretty much uh, flew by. Yeah, that was super nice to see because there's a lot of stuff like when you get into Babel where you kind of push the blocks on the outside and then go back up. And so that was, uh, that just was so cool to see with the 3x3 making that super easy. There haven't been any special blocks yet. We will see those at the boss level though. Right. doing oh I'm down at the bottom. Oh man, that's gonna take me a minute to get That's just the worst. But yeah, so you're grabbing that you got that juice early so you're able to uh, make the route a little bit more trivial. Even more so because this I would have to climb all the way back down, not be more <laughs> Right. Convenient replacement lock. Gets me all the way up here. You are game. <laughs> this is the way they intended the songs. I mean, honestly, yes, because they put the yeah. items there. <laughs> right. Oh no, set back. Now, the reason why I couldn't. The side all the way over is because of that purple block in the middle of it, so I had to. So the better question is, how much does playing Catherine help out with playing Tetris? I'll get her back. Um, <laughs> not enough. Does not translate. Oh. <laughs> no, oh. unfortunately, my Tetris skills are kind of whack. I don't even know how to do a T spin. I can make Vincent spin. That's about it. <laughs> That's a V spin. Okay, final stage. This they completely changed. Okay, yeah, I I am very unfamiliar with what this looks like in full body. They're gonna be showing me something. Do you mean to do that? Yeah, okay. I'll do this. I see.
got it, yeah. Those things are pretty fixable. Uh, I need to push that. Whoops. Fixable. Absolutely. Look, I'm an old man. I should have been in bed an hour and a half ago. I'm tired. Vincent's tired. We're all tired. Oh, yeah. We're playing in the dreams. It's time for bed. It is a good uh, sleepy game. Especially with the piano. Maybe not being in the minor key, but the piano nonetheless. You can also count the sheep. Does anybody actually want sheep to go to sleep? Not me. I imagine some people do. Isn't it because sheep sounds like sleep? I think that's actually think, a line they think you're right. say in the game. I think it is. Yeah. It's uh, boss time. This is definitely the final level, right? Well, it looks it. like it on the board. So those are the sprint blocks, the trampolines. I think we've seen them before, but... Um, they, I think it's five spaces high it sends you. Yeah, five. It sends you a number of spaces high. We actually would have seen them in uh, stage four, but easy doesn't count. Right. Nice uh, behind the tower. That's another quality of life change is where your character actually gets highlighted too. And now everything gets real spooky, real dark. You see fighter organs. But we don't need to see. We already know. Uh, anybody who's already typing out step on the purple block, uh, no. It's a cool trick. Ah, right. So this is a cutscene with Steve, uh, the, the other sheep, and the other person who... Um, Catherine with a C has been seeing, yeah, um, and he meets a bad end. <laughs> uh, we'll just put it that way. He gets he gets eaten. Brief cap of heaven. Oh, uh, depressed Vincent is depressed. Either that or he's tired. Maybe a little bit of both. You got a mail. Don't show us. Here, you're just gonna take our word for it. <laughs> ah, so this is the last stage, like it says. Right, the, the last game. stage for sure. This is the escort mission. Every every game has has one. <laughs> every good game has an escort mission. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you guide Catherine with a K up. And she is not as fast as uh, Crispy. She hasn't been doing this the last 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> is she trying her best? Yeah. That's just important. It, everybody's got a first run, right? right. No, no need to be ashamed of your first run. Yeah, everybody starts somewhere. Save a little bit of time by pulling this block so she doesn't climb down and then back up. Yeah, sometimes her AI uh, makes questionable decisions, right? Yeah. Depending on like what paths are available. The boss here isn't that demon child at the bottom of the screen. It's more the AI. Oh yeah. For sure, especially in a mode where normally the boss like periodically shoots lightning, right? So you kind of have this mechanic in the bottom right is Catherine wait, which doesn't matter here, but normally you have to kind of pay attention. And if she's about to step on a lightning block, you kind of have to tell her to slow down. 
Alright, and then as soon as she steps on this white block. Alright, see ya. Bye. Peace. <laughs> She'll find her way up. There's a fun fact about that that staircase at the end that looked pretty special is that that is actually like an item block type in the game. Um, I thought that was neat when playing around with stuff. The bathroom scene, that's like the third time we've been in there. But the question is, do we go back to Kappa Heaven? Uh, if you're here no, for Kappa Heaven, this point. Yeah, you're kind of... I think it's out. Oh, Thomas yes. Mutton quote, let's go. You got a mail. Wait a minute. Why is the time still going? It said it was the last stage! I stop uh... playing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the game the game lies. The game lies a lot. Uh... Oh, no, no nobody's allowed to watch this. The, this the block scene recording is not allowed. It, uh, kill the stream. Come on. We, we can't let Atlas people shut it down. Shut it down. <laughs> I like how games do that where they try to prevent you from recording them. The weird thing is that Warning pops up on stage six in the Japanese version. Really? Why? Oh, could be could be any any reason. Welcome to my realm. Right. So, um, for people who are paying attention to the plot, now that voice should sound a little bit familiar. That is actually the bartender. Um, so he is going to be our final opponent. I'm on this line. I'm coming, Daddy. I'm coming. Wait for me. <laughs> what? This stage has actually a really cool design. It's got three separate, like, smaller paths that normally you have to kind of weave between them. So you kind of have to go from, like, left to right to middle. Um, the mystery blocks can be any of the other kinds of blocks, but I think in full body they are actually predetermined. Yeah, Is that right? yeah it's predetermined. Yeah. It, I don't quite remember the pattern, but there's a string of like three spike blocks in a row. We don't get that far into the pattern. Anymore. Right, it won't it won't come into play, but that is uh, something that was greatly changed. Uh, they also in the original game the mystery blocks would activate as soon as you stepped on them, as opposed to full body, they activate as soon as you step off of them. Um, so a heavy, heavy nerf. I would say if you're looking for one of like the most difficult games, uh, you probably should check out like full body on hard. <laughs> If you try remix on hard, that is like next level. Yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah. L let me just say on my casual playthrough, I mean it's not very much, but I believe I died like two times. Right. Which oh, but, uh, <laughs> speedrunner died 18 times. Oh, that's actually kind of bad. Yeah. Yeah, there's your string of three. Which is really nice being able to know what they're going to be ahead of time. I can definitely uh, take out a lot of the anxiety. Take some of the edge off. No, 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 we're in, uh, it never gets old. It's a pretty good one. Come on, come on. Oh, I can play oh. The game. <laughs> there we go. He's being rude. Yeah. As you progress through the game, uh, there are the enemy sheep that like roam the level. But as part of the plot, oh, the monster block can be brutal. Uh, as part of the plot, they turn more and more vicious looking. So like now they have these axes. 
when originally they just started as normal sheep. Now they're mean sheep. <laughs> they're is, bad guys. This is mean <laughs> sheep. Some of those monster blocks weren't uh, very nice, but it was so fun. Yeah, a little bit more explanation on them. Most of the block types are fairly straightforward, uh, but the monster blocks, they move, and their AI is definitely programmed to try to block you uh, wherever they can. Um, and then their other gimmick is that you cannot spider on them. If you try to spider across them, they'll actually lick you and you'll fall. So. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see them in them. Yeah. It's part of the plot point, uh, the mysterious voice on the other side of the conventional, their identity eventually gets revealed. There's a lot of, like, uh, fourth wall stuff that happens in Catherine. That's... It, at least the first time that I played it, it was one of the first games that like had a cool impact in the storytelling department. That thought. Um, yeah. Oh, I see someone saying, try, "Imagine playing this in first person." I will pay money if someone makes this a VR oh. game. <laughs> I'm sick just thinking about that. Just for the love of God, have teleport uh, movement. I don't like looking yeah, at the bouncing sounds terrible. I'm gonna wait here for a second. Go. Nice, nice. I had to wait, otherwise this tower would have been off kilter by about three blocks. Yeah, sometimes you can go so fast that notice that we're at the top as the stage is falling. So if you start to move with stuff before things settle, uh, you can actually be in a really bad way. Sometimes you actually have to slow down in a speed run. Who thought? Right, so now you're trying to bait the <laughs> guy to come down. Full body out of that mechanic too, where you can actually uh, swap places with the opponent if they're standing on that block. Which is really nice, because in story mode in classic, sometimes you get stuck with people blocking you. Uh, there you go. I'm gonna monster block. I'm not gonna hurt you. Much. Oh, I bit his tongue. Oh. Look at the wife family. You know, I take it for granted, but I'm thinking more about the first person and how many times I hit the camera to look up and see what blocks are coming. Oh man, uh, just imagine that first person would be crazy. I think. Oh uh, yeah. This watch I'd break my neck just looking up <laughs> the whole time. It's like you I, I think and the blocks are about as tall as Vincent, so what? They're like five seven, five eight, something like that? Yeah, they're they're like they're like six foot tall blocks almost. So you'd have to actively reach up in order to go on to the next one if this was VR. Yeah. The first time, I'll keep it a mystery, but uh, the first time that you play the game, uh, it does not tell you which like sphere is actually the end. So like, there's a lot of anticipation when you're actually playing the game and died so many times like when will it actually end <laughs> so it's it's really cool part of the game i'm sorry if i'm making anybody nauseous by moving the camera but i kind of like to know what what's coming up next yeah it can certainly be uh disorienting for people who are not uh catherine inclined <laughs> Call them vertically challenged or something? Because they're climbing up the tower? You can also say Catherine inclined. I like that. Is that inclined like that with a, a lot. Is that inclined with a C or a K? <laughs> I don't see. Oh, 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 I see. I see. Very nice. Phew. 
I still, yeah. Cat of the queue. They actually did it. Oh, I went too fast. The stage spawned weird. Oh, okay, this might take a minute to do. Got it. So, what happens when a stage starts to get a little bit funky? A common way to fix it is going to be to try to push stuff out. Um, a lot of the stages are pretty malleable uh, when you get good. That's uh, part of the technique that you can kind of learn, as well as that 3x3 three three block kind of made things super easy. Since we already fixed it. They definitely changed this from the original. This used to just be all dark blocks. Yeah. They made it a minefield. And in hard, it's even worse. I love Mutton's design uh, as a boss. I think it's so cool with the, with the go ahead chair. Uh, can I just say uh, NAA? <laughs> Honestly, same. I like how he just sits in his chair the whole fight. Uh, he's just He's lounging, man. Yeah, he's big chilling. Yeah, uh, his gimmicks are kind of neat. I think he's got the gun, and I think he's got the gavel, too, right? He, gets he just had he to randomizes. There you go. So it's not random. It um, changes every block to a different kind of block. And it's, or every special block to a different special block, and it's on a cycle. Gotcha. He also has the foot. Oh, that, that's a, a stop. That's private. Okay, his aim's actually gotten better. He took some Counter Strike classes. Yeah. Aim trainer. Aim bot, more like it. Like it. You need to And you can bait his shots, it's not that hard. Yeah, he's not the brightest, uh, brightest sheep. To do something different. That's one way to do it. <laughs> All right, last boss. Yeah, that's a that's game, right? Yeah, definitely. You escaped, or have you? Every level only has one boss, right? I don't. Dice, where's the credit sequence? I don't know. We're going off script. Wait, you guys got a script? <laughs> it usually uh, comes off the top of my head. So, uh, cat jams at the ready. And I love Dumazid's uh, boss design here. He lost his cozy chair. He went full on superpowers. And the music, uh, everything about this is pretty neat. Alrighty. Bouncy 
bouncy, bouncy. That's an easy one. So I don't know, does he do, does he do any attacks? Uh, if you're at the bottom for too long, he does do the Doomazine Beam. I see, I see. When I first played the game, uh, I thought, I didn't realize that he was saying Doomazine Beam, I thought he was saying Doobity Beam. <laughs> so for the longest time, that's what I called it. And until somebody looked at me like I was crazy, rightfully so. Uh, I thought that was fun to share. Yeah. Alright, so yeah, I am cursed. Whatever that means. Don't really know. It doesn't mean much of anything, really. No. Something about a muscle brand is for absolute safety. Not that it matters because I spawned right back where I was. But, uh, yeah, cursed. Uh, every time you pull a block, all the special blocks minus these uh, Dark Hole blocks will change into a different one. And those are on a cycle. Uh, the best way is to get a monster block and change that into a spring block, but there's not really wells high enough on easy to really get any benefit. Out of it. Oh yeah, he does this. I'm gonna say no. So just to get rid of the randomness, I just negated his last attack. Wait, right, so just won't spawn in now? Yep. You do not get any meteors if you undo immediately after he spawns in. Yeah, you undo the, the trigger. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, for tech, uh, time comes up on the 151st step, which is in 11 steps. You see the number in the top right. In time. I think you got world record. Yeah, uh, 31 seconds under world record. Okay. Sorry, Hiatus Taz, strats, man. let's go! There we go. <laughs> what? <laughs> we do it live. <laughs> Very nice. I'll let uh, Vincent basically proclaim my feelings as of right now. Pause. Oh, I don't want to pause again. Hell yeah! Pause. There we go. Oh, GG to that. Very, very nice. I mean, we're under estimate. Uh, what ending did we get? I, I really don't care, but... Ooh! Bad ending. We get run over by a car. Let's oh, yes. go! <laughs> Oh no, we get a cheer. We, we, we can watch this with the run over my car. Yeah, this is the best ending, I think. Yeah, I'll explain that in a second. But first, thanks for coming. <sighs> so where is everyone? Why is it just us here? Funny thing about that time, I was at one point 45 seconds behind. But you wouldn't answer any of my calls. Guys, nice. where's the time save? Uh, ever since Shadow of Vincent. <laughs> nice, nice. So, what is it? It's over. I don't want to talk about it. Don't you get it? Yeah, I do. I need to tell you something. Why am I? Oh no! Nobody this? wants this conversation. <sighs> Vincent. What is it? This is your last chance. Shout out to the Italian Stallion Rider equipment since 2009. It was all <laughs> an illusion. Huh? What was? My cheating. Huh? There never was another woman. Are you?
Are you kidding? I, I swear we'll move on once we get I hit by a car. That? I know right. it's hard to believe. But I'm telling you. I had a great moral for Valentine's I'm Day. Never... I didn't cheat on you. It was all an illusion. Don't, Don't worry about it. I'm serious here. Don't try this at home. <laughs> and, and I thought I was cheating. I know Just ignore the two texts we sent you about an hour ago. I was driving myself crazy too. I mean, that's a problem. And the fact that we ignored your call. Uh, hey. Never gave you any updates about what we were doing. Uh, my friends and the boss Just a bad guy. It was all in my head. You don't it's better than all his nightmares. This. No. I just didn't want it to end with this. It's a prank. Just a prank. <laughs> That's why I had you come. It's a prank with a K, not a C. I'll never do it. Of course. I can promise you that. You dumping me finally made me realize I need you. Will you give me the chance to make it up to you, please? Right. right. I understand everything, but Vincent, we can't go. I like how he's also doing this at like his frequent bar. Like he doesn't take any of his special. It's just the bar. You can't just. It's over between us. Yeah. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. You want us excited? Oh, what am I? I'm so tired. I'm sorry. I'm going now. This is when we slap our face on the table and go to sleep. Goodbye. I was mistaken. We're alone. Sorry, I failed Valentine's Day. Any percent? Oh, there, there is another ending. I think that one's with uh, C. Yeah, isn't it, it's, it? it's bad C, Catherine. Yeah. Bad C. Yeah. Oh, that's when you get hit by a car. Yeah. Right. Well, uh, we're not going to be quite going anywhere just yet because we actually do have another run in store for you all very quick, featuring more Catherine. Uh, this one's uh, absolutely impressive, if I remember correctly, but uh, there is a special bonus mode called the, I think it's the Tower of Babel. Hey, where'd you go? Yeah, it, it, it's Tower of Babel. It, it, yeah, just Babel, yeah. It's Babel. And as well, um, Enjoy the story. are you doing one player or two player? I'm doing two player because one player scares me. All right, Funnily so enough. I, uh, type that in, uh, feel free to uh, just let me know. Um, I just described a chat what two player entails. Two player, uh, I don't really have any friends who are up at 12 o'clock at night. Uh, I mean, Shaz is here, and the guys is here, but the online for this game sucks. So we've kind of had to make the or at least I've had to make do with this. I've done it on uh, PC as well. So on PC, it was really easy because remapping controls is just baked in the game. But for here, I'm going to have to bring in my friend, Crispy Hanako. And, uh, Enjoy in other words, challenge. it's uh, there are a limited number of items. the other half of my brain. So, essentially, it's going to be one player, two controllers. Yeah. Well, I'm also going to have to... All right. And 30 minutes sounds good for estimate? Yeah, 30. It's really generous, but uh -huh. yeah. But yes, uh, what's going to be happening now is there's a bonus mode, which is the... It's like kind of testing your um, skills in a bunch of randomized towers, right, if I remember correctly. I think they're like they're, they're randomly generated. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything Most, but the start. Yeah. Everything but the start uh, but, is randomly generated. Awesome. And the cool thing is uh, Crispy Hanako is going to be playing with Crispy Hanako, uh, meaning they're going to be on two controllers. They're controlling both characters as they're doing this. Exactly. So uh, just let us know when the time is ready to start. Uh, I do have a question for both Ecdysis and Shaz. Uh, we do have a choice of characters. Who do you want me to play as? We've got Blue Cap, Red Cap, Vincent in clothing, Vincent in not so much clothing, Hey Catherine, C Catherine, Q Catherine if you're so inclined, Orlando, Johnny, Tony, Erica, Boss, and... Is that Joker from Smash Brothers? I can't believe it. It's Joker. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Erica for mine. Uh, do you have Tobby? Oh yeah, Tobby. Yeah. Uh, I've got his brother Toby. That'll do. 
in the in the Japanese version, they they the call him Tabi. <laughs> So, uh, chat, I will be relying on you guys for the next three stages. If I see... The, the more names I see, the better, and whatever one I see more of, I will pick for the next stage. So I will be swapping characters between stages, so I guess that... We can make a poll, actually, of how, how many characters? Uh, that's ten characters? We can make a poll, and then the top two can be the uh, the decision. How about we do uh, Boss, Vincent, uh, the two, and then the three Catherines? Yeah, that's fine. I'll just yeah. pick out right. them. Yeah, I'll let Tech know what the poll is, and then that poll will come up during the first stage. Uh, you All can right. run, you can run the poll for the... For... Uh... Oh, go ahead. You can run the poll for about two minutes, and that's probably all it's going to need for this stage. Awesome. All It'll right. probably be two... Four, six, then that's it. Just two, four, six minutes for the next polls. All right. Anya, on your count, we can begin the uh, timer. Alrighty. So we got four stages in three, two, one, go. Let's go. Thank you, Erica. Helpful as always. Let's go. So um, one thing about the two-player as well is where the stages, the lengths of them are actually cut in half uh, as opposed to a single-player version. But uh, if you were curious about like a puzzle game, playing that, uh, and that, oh, playing static stages isn't that interesting, this is where like Babel's super cool because uh, the patterns vary depending on whatever level of the stage you're on. So the top right determines what kind of patterns can fall and it just is a random from whatever set. Oh, so, uh, I guys just wanted the uh, edge counter. Can we get the new record counter? Oh, it's on the screen already. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Of all the bugs that they, they fixed, they never fixed the repeated record, new record. Every step that you take, it will be in my dreams forever, or my nightmares. <laughs> what do you mean? It's a feature. <laughs> Not a bug, <laughs> you're right. Um, I don't know how much we'll see it in this altar, but there's some really neat two-player tech where blocks tend to dangle when there's nothing holding them to support them, but if you're having two players, you can actually push a block to catch it. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, but in general, this is really impressive to see just one player do all of this at the same time. So every Babel level as well, just to keep aware for timing, has 10 levels. Uh, the amount of steps will vary for each one, but they all have the same 10 levels. So you can see that in the top right. So this one's about 120 for Minir, it's about 50, 160, Obelisk is about 180, and Access Community is like 200 something. Right. And there was an issue in the original uh, classic release of uh, Axis Moody for the single player. It didn't work <laughs> pretty much in the US version, but uh, that was patched in the full body. I think that's the only noteworthy thing to say about Babel, other than um, the really cool thing being that you have your juice. The, the X factor. Uh, in the, uh, real quick before character. it disappears, uh, that time of 153, yes, that is world record. Wait, what? <laughs> in, in the top left. His, oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Got All right. So if we beat the times in the top left, just basically assume it's world record. All right. Uh, also, this is going to be fun to say. Your character choice for the next one is going to be Catherine and Catherine. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I think it's Q and C. Q and C, I think, yeah, I think that's what chat likes more anyway. <laughs> also, uh, we're throwing up another poll. We're going to be placing uh, these two Catherines with Orlando and Joker. So same poll, because I think there's another level after this, right? Yes, there's two levels yeah. after this. All right, perfect. We have Catherine and Catherine. <laughs> It is nerve-wracking. 
So Manir, uh, the, the Babel stages are supposed to be more difficult than the story stages. Uh, and Manir's gimmick is that it tries to be a shorter or a tighter stage, so it won't be as wide. Uh, Alter just kind of has some generic tough patterns. Um, but Manir tries to be very tight. Single player is usually like three blocks wide, uh, but it looks like in doubles that might be about four blocks. Yeah, you can't, like, the most you can really move is, the, most, the least amount of room you need to anything is about three blocks. So... So Manir kind of gives you the bare minimum of what you need or what you can use. New record, new record, new record, new record. And as you can probably tell when I'm starting to talk, uh, the single core processor in my head kind of just wraps <laughs> out. Well, you're quite literally controlling two characters right now, pretty seamlessly, so give yourself some credit. Okay, it's overclocked. Uh, I could it's never overclocked. do. It's overclocked. <laughs> overclocked. <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's see what the next boat's leaning towards. I can't believe right now Joker from Smash Brothers <laughs> is winning. <laughs> Some nice synchronized climbing there for a second. I love seeing that. It's so just like aesthetically pleasing, I think. I'm gonna use the juice to get up. Uh, every stage as well, around level 4 or 5, there's like a reset kind of pattern. Um, so that's kind of like the halfway point, and it gives you a nice little break. There's that nice little tech we were talking about earlier, of having that dangling side and then catching it. Um, and that's going to be rinsed and repeated a couple times throughout the, the two-player run. Along with um, some coordinated push-outs are going to be pretty important. And that's going to be the last juice, so from here on out it's, it's pure solving. Here we're going to get that nice synchronized pull, you love to see it, to then have the stage collapse. Give it easier uh, solve. Nice little collapse. New record, new Brent, er, new Catherine the Sea just was chilling out at the bottom for a little bit while uh, 1P fixes the stage. New record, new record. But not going to be too big of a problem. That's the yeah. fun part about uh, picking both Catherines, because you say, oh, Catherine's fixing the stage, well, Catherine's climbing the stage. <laughs> You have to be a very fluent speaker of Catherine in order to differentiate C and Q on the fly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can just hear it sometimes. Let's see. I will do this. Yeah, there you go. So Crispy realized that they didn't have enough space to actually keep pulling out, and so went for a really nice uh, uh, simultaneous collapse, simultaneous push. Very cool. That was wild on uh, some of the uh, late strats on that one. But there's two more character choices, right? Yeah. All right, for the next poll, we have Joker and Boss. Oh, God. That's a nice combo. And then we're going to add, uh, for the final poll, we're going to add in the red and blue sheeps to replace those two. Leave it to me. Too sharp as dressed. It's showtime. Boss is pretty good. Uh, get ready for the a song change. Not just because the stage has its own theme, but just because we picked Joker. For Smash Joker Brothers. has his own theme. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it plays every time. All the time. It's very fun to do in multiplayer is to pick just Joker. Oh yeah, we also don't have the announcer. We have the rest of the uh, Phantom Thieves. Right. 
So Obelisk's gimmick, uh, if Manir was supposed to be kind of a tight maneuvering, Obelisk opens up again, but the block types vary. Uh, so I think though in uh, co-op for this stage, it's only ice, uh, some cracked blocks, and um, I think another kind of block, but I'm not sure. Uh, but single player, you get actually mystery blocks as well, and it gets kind of chaotic. Yeah. Spike blocks, cool. That was a nice synchronized push there. Right, so Joker's gonna patch in that little spot that fell there. Poor boss. Yeah, poor boss. Left behind. Yeah, sometimes when the going gets tough, even with two player or one player, two uh, characters, uh, sometimes you let one just hang for a little bit while you just uh, single player it up and just fix something. Yeah. Not too bad. I think you also get a unique uh, cutscene when you play, at least in the single player, and you select Joker uh, for you, Babel. You get two, and that's just because you beat Joker for the first time, and you beat a star. I see. This is a, I see a question from Master, uh, that this is a uh, two controller run. So this is just crispy, all crispy. Like a boss. A boss is there. Crispy is saving uh, their juice as well. They still have all three for each character, so anything that gets too hairy, that juice is going to come in, uh, in handy for sure. God, it's a good thing I'm not a drummer because my leg is going a million miles an hour right now. <laughs> so, Babel sometimes, when you get too far ahead, uh, the whole stage needs to settle before the next pattern drops. So sometimes when blocks like fall completely off, you have to wait seven seconds or so for the game to realize, oh, I need to drop the oh! pattern. Oh no! Oh. That could happen. Poor boss. F. F in chat. Pay respects. Unfortunate. Who's ready to hear the song for another five minutes? Well, it's all in play. Uh, this does open a question, though, that's been asked in chat. Um, so, how do you hold the controllers with all this? Uh, just like it's an extra wide controller, I have each. I can actually show it once the run's over. But I have player one mapped to the left half of the controller, and then player two mapped to the right half of another. So it's almost as if I'm holding a single controller, just. it's really long. Yeah, the PlayStation accessibility uh, remapping stuff really comes in handy. But story mode went so well, so of course, a little bit of hiccup uh, and babble, but that's fine. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. still. Is okay. Stage could definitely be fixed. Still, just needs a little bit of a uh, little bit of work. A little bit of TLC. Oh yeah. <laughs> Burn that juice. Get a little bit low for level five. All right. There we go. Now the stage is falling properly again. <laughs> it's a real shame when it just gets caught up like that. Uh, 
Yeah, sometimes movement can get a little bit tricky. When you hit the grab button, your character snaps to whatever block is, like, the closest. Uh, so if you're facing a certain direction, your character might literally turn not how you quite want it to. Especially when, like, you start standing between multiple blocks. Very nice push on the outside there. Um, and very nice. Obelisk was kind of splitting into these two towers, and so that was very cool to, to push that block in the middle to kind of join them. It gives you so much more room to work with. Uh, and that's kind of Obelisk's story, is that you kind of alternate between these two towers that have, like, this one wide gap between them. So you're usually going to be trying to push and uh, snake your way through between them. That was unfortunate. Race of a dream? Yeah. It was unfortunate that the stage felt like that. You have to be careful because uh, the blocks connect on the edges, on the diagonals, so you kind of get like these V shapes. So if one side gets taller than the other, it can actually kind of easily block the other one uh, because it'll grab all that pattern that is falling down from the top. And boss is being super careful now, dismantling all those traps. Get them out of here. Um, which is probably just playing it safe and smart. You actually can do some crazy stuff in full body where you can, uh, like, pull a block when you step onto a spike block, and if you do it at the right timing, uh, you can actually, like, deactivate and get the pull instead of having to step off of it first. So it's, uh, just full body things. <laughs> this is kind of interesting bit here. Um, yeah. It got caught in the middle there, so it has to decide to do this kind of push. There you go. Nice dodge with one player. <laughs> I almost forgot that. I was hope I didn't want to say anything, but yeah, um, you got it. Make sure all of these are deactivated, please. Very good call, and now that the left side's pretty calm, it should be fairly straightforward, I think. Uh, just a little bit of time to actually build the staircase. I need to borrow this for a second. There you go. Very nice job. Oh, Great that was job. Awesome. That was... That was, that was like a tough level. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that death. It just proves I'm human, okay? Exactly. All right, for our final two, we have K. Catherine and Blue Sheep. A very generous chat. Yeah, very generous. Yep, they like the Blue Sheep. Yeah. Red Sheep is my personal favorite, but Red Sheep is also terribly obnoxious. Um, so it's probably sheep. for the best. <laughs> yeah, we went with Blue. I like Blue Sheep. He seems like a nice guy. Blue is very chill. I think the reason why Red Sheep's so obnoxious is, well, the headcanon between me and uh, Sketches is that since Orange Sheep knew how bad the multiplayer was for full body, Atlas had to silence him, so he's really being obnoxious because he wants his brother back. Yeah, could be. Yeah, it was very strange that it, that they got rid of Orange Cap. Uh, yeah, that's so strange. But just multiplayer things. So Axis Mundi is the final stage of the Babel uh, maps. It is the most difficult. Um, it has even more chaotic patterns uh, and kind of requires things that were used in all the previous stages and so really Axis Mundi especially single player which is twice as long and really twice as difficult as the multiplayer version the co-op version um, everything in Catherine kind of builds towards Axis Mundi uh, and you even get a special true ending cutscene at the very end so Hey, Catherine's a little bit vicious. Yeah. <laughs> she bullied accident, that sheep, that... didn't she? <laughs> she sure did. Yeah. Let's go spend a little bit of time, I think, just doing some pushes and, and 
fixing the shape. Got to find a way maybe over to the uh, left side at some this point. Is, this is worth using. I think so. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, a couple relatively easy patterns here. Uh, Axis, though, gets a lot of mileage out of having very inconveniently placed uh, uh, dark hole blocks and uh, cracked blocks. Yeah, I'm gonna come into this side. I'll make it. Cross over to the right. Sounds like a fair plan. You could definitely spider over. Or just do that, yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Doing some pushes to collapse it, get a nice little structure going. And we're back in action. <laughs> we're alive. Some of the tower recreation is just wild to watch on how much it like break like the tower. Yeah. It's uh at the high level, Catherine definitely uh, turns into a lot of stage breaking, uh, just as much as it is about staircase making. You just got full bodied there a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes this stage doesn't fall right. Um, thanks, Atlas. Thanks, Atlas. Everybody, thanks, Atlas. <laughs> I mean, I guess they are running a single too, so thanks for that too. Nice push there. Very, uh, very unfortunate. On brands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't say it was unexpected. But this is going to be a little bit of slow climbing just while we have, like, this, these very narrow uh, platforms. But we're at the reset, so it should level itself out a little bit here. She has a quick question. Uh, if you break the tower, will the exit eventually fall on Babel, or do you have to climb a certain amount of steps for it to spawn? You have to the climb stage all, will... all the way up to level 10, and then that's when the uh, state starts to spawn. So you can't just keep breaking the tower with the hopes of just bringing it down to you. Right. Correct. Like yeah, a lot of the, some of the really cool stuff though that gets done actually, I'm glad that you kind of brought that up, is because uh, some of the really good speedrunners of Babel, what they'll do is that they will, at level 9, they will start positioning the stage to be easily broken, and then when they, as soon as they hit level 10, which means the goal can spawn, they will push out the remainder of the stage so that that falls, and then they'll catch the goal block with a random block. Um, and actually solve it like much faster than the intended way of doing the patterns. It's it's whack. It's yeah, it's it's whack. Uh, it's, it's just the sword sprouted. Yeah, it looks like the the levels, the sides evened out, so the stage should be falling a little bit nicer now. That is the down, the the huge downside of doing these pushes is where you get an uneven tower, and so the patterns don't fall right. Um, but you do what you gotta do. <laughs> Get, the right side is now getting a little uh, little blocky, <laughs> a little rough to work with, so it's going to take a little bit more work. Uh, 1P, K Catherine only has the, the juice, uh, but 2P does not, so Crispy has to keep that in mind while they're going, that uh, they can't just, you know, uh, they have to actually make a way up for 2P. 
So here the right side is getting really bad, so they're actually going to cross over to the left, which is going to be really nice because that left side is uh, pretty much untouched, so it's nice and juicy for climbing. It should be fairly straightforward. And again, time for tech. When I get both players on the pedestal, and it's not when I press the button, it's just going to pop up there. <laughs> So this is very annoying with that cracked block in the middle. Um, makes it a little bit tricky to figure out who should go. But because of the ah, juice, oh, no. facing the wrong way. Um, let's see. Can it can definitely be fixed, I think. Yeah, this requires a little bit of, but not a big deal at all. Save. Now this is yeah going to be a little bit a little bit janky. <laughs> but that's okay. I think this does work out. Oh no. Oh. I like that. Oh. All right. Let's do it again. This time with speed. This is why we yeah. have estimates. That's true. It is why we have estimates, so. And that was tough. That was very unfortunate. Uh, it was kind of a slower access, got kind of caught up uh, with some bad, really just bad pattern RNG, I think. But I think this this time will go a lot smoother. Uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the old dual player blue screen. Yeah, sometimes it's tough doing it all on your own, right? I imagine. Nice job grabbing uh, that block while it was dang. Two player tech is so strong. <laughs> it makes things a lot easier when you have another player to uh, help uh, fix the tower. Some nice, uh, nice push-outs. That's especially what you want to do when you start to see the tower get kind of like these long columns going up. Sometimes it helps just to simplify and just push things down and bring the tower down to you. Like you can see on the right side, it's kind of high, so he's gonna or they're gonna push it, bring it down a little bit. And get full body in the process. <laughs> Hopefully not. Uh, that is something that can happen sometimes is uh, the game doesn't quite register if you are standing on a tower that is falling. The game can sometimes not register that right. And even if you will land properly, the game will still kill you early. Um, we like to say it's just full body things. Um, but that's just Atlas, I guess. Yeah, I think this section is going better than last run. It's looking a little Meneer-ish. It's getting a little bit tight. Um, so we'll see how Christy handles that. But I have faith. You should too. Yeah. At least someone does. <laughs> they can just say that Blue Sheep wanted his revenge for what Catherine did to him earlier. That's, that's true, that's true. Catherine was very mean. Gotta do a little bit of synchronized pushing, definitely to bring that down. Mm. Gonna have to probably burn some juice. Actually, no, I don't. This game is 3D! Oh. Could've fooled me. You did fool me, actually. I forgot. Nice job double stepping on the crack block. Sometimes uh, it can be very intuitive to try to push and pull everything, but actually sometimes just stepping on crack blocks is the way to go. This might be a little bit weird for 2P. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh. Ah. That's unfortunate. New record. New record. New record. It's but, uh, third time's a charm. New record. New record. New record. New record. If we don't get it this time, then we'll just mercy kill it. New record. New record. New record. New record. Yeah, the uh, Axis is a little rusty, but Axis is, again, Axis is the toughest stage in, in the whole game. Um, and this this stuff is uh, is randomized, too, so it's very, very tough. Doing a good job so far of uh, managing tower, making sure it doesn't get too uh, Swiss cheesy. That's really what it looks like Axis kind of comes down to, is battle of uh, just keeping its shape. The little bit. Yeah. Doing some push, bringing things down. A nice job walking on the block. That's always cool to see. Fortunate that the grab was a little bit slow. But you got it there, so that's good. Nice job. Yeah, that, that grab, that second player to push those blocks really, really saves a lot of shape. Um, it cannot be understated enough. That dark hole block, um, the, the, that, that's something that's cool in Babel is that the dark hole blocks, and a couple other blocks too, but they get their own um, texture. And so I really like the dark hole blocks in Babel. Uh, but they suck up anything that's above them. So it's really bad. We call them a toilet sometimes. If only they could be clogged. If only they could be clogged. Such a good tech from Catherine Classic where you could actually uh, you could make the toilets not suck. You could you could clog them and make them not work uh, very easily. And that was super cool. But this is full body. <laughs> Don't full body me. Thank you. Nice uh, maneuvering. Kind of juggling the characters sometimes gets a little bit tough. Oh yeah, especially where they're on opposite sides of each other. Yeah. Because I always usually expect two P to be on the right side. Oh yeah, I can see how that would definitely kind of a little bit of muscle memory there too, right? Yeah. Gotta be a little bit careful. Nice job to move uh, one P first. <laughs> Good call. I think that's a safe call. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm very, very tired. <laughs> You're good. I'm good. You were, you were really fast in the story mode. So exactly. <laughs> I think, I think everybody gives you a pass. Not only that, but this is incredibly tough. Oh yeah. This is, and it's still impressive. I mean, I'm impressed. <laughs> Burn some juice. Nice job. Might want to collapse a little bit, condense that shape. Yeah. Good job. Can get so far. So that black hole block right in the middle there is a little bit annoying because the right side looks nice uh, to get to eventually. But Crispy's going to chill out on the left until a, a more opportune moment kind of comes up. A common thing that you'll want to do whenever you have these uh, cracked blocks 
is usually pull a normal white block on top of them. That way you don't uh, accidentally step on them multiple times and uh, you know lock yourself out of the path. Level 9, so uh, the last level will be level 10, so getting there. A little bit more work to be done, but certainly can, can have it. All I'm learning from this is that Axis Mundy scares me. As it should. Yeah. That's a that's a natural reaction to have. <laughs> nice push. Nice job. Away from these blocks. Yeah, just playing it nice and cautious, nice and safe. Nice synchronize. Oh, I caught on the back, it looks like, so it actually was a little bit unfortunate in how that fell. Reminder, Catherine is a 3D game. <laughs> uh, sometimes it can be annoying when things catch on and when you can't see them behind the tower. Okay. But Bar this pattern felt any much better. <laughs> anything unfortunate, right. knock on wood. Let's hope uh, Blue Sheep and Catherine don't bully each other this time. And... All right. Good job. Uh, All right. Very nice. Very nice. The dual core is screaming. Well, your mind must be an absolute wreck right now because uh, that is... That was pretty high up. I can't imagine controlling two characters for uh, roughly about half an hour of... Uh, some of the game's hardest puzzles. The final stage of I can't either, and I just did it. Ah, uh, you did. Uh, all right. But before we do have you go, I don't want to say thank you to both of the Captain Runs. Uh, we got a new world record in uh, Easy Remix, and it was always a fun showing of Babel. But a couple questions for you, really quick, Crispy. Uh, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give? Uh, I would say shout outs to everybody in the competitive community. Shaz being one of them, uh, you're all knuckleheads. Uh, shout outs to everybody in the Japanese scene, with especially Leza, Masoto, uh, who else does it? Uh, God. I know Selena. Selena, yeah. Uh, who else does Babel? Uh, it, Mercy. Yeah, oh, yeah, Mercy, Mercy. That was the guy I was trying to think of. Uh, also, Isu, the guy who really got me into speedrunning Catherine, especially Battle Pairs in the first place. Uh, he is on a completely different level. He doesn't remap his controls. I don't understand how his brain works. But... All right. And last but not least, uh, if anyone wanted to find you personally on Twitch or anywhere, where can they find you? Uh, basically, every social I have, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch... It's all slash crispy Hanukkah, no space. So I usually try to stream at least twice a week at this point. Uh, I'm going casually through Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if you're into that and have already played the game and or don't mind spoilers, I'm playing that right now. So I do occasionally speed run every once in a while. But yeah, I usually post when I'm going live on Twitter. All right. I want to thank you both again for being here. Thank you for the great run. Uh, we're going to go on over to a quick wellness break. This is time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, do what you need to do. Uh, as well, before we go, I just want to say that Frost Metals is going to be from February 27th to March 5th. You can use exclamation mark FF in chat or go to gamesdonequick.com slash framefatalis for more information. We'll be right back. Alright, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. Hope that you enjoyed the wonderful uh, exhibition of both the main captain speedrun and the babble. It's absolutely wild just kind of watch the blocks climbing the whole time. It's always a very fun time. It's also a pretty unique horror game. Uh, horror comes in all shapes and sizes, and it's a fun reminder of that. Uh, speaking of uh, horror coming in all shapes and sizes, I'm probably going to bring you one of the weirdest games that I'm aware about. Uh, really, the best way I can describe this game is it is a Korean horror dating simulator. Um, 
It's a really fun run. I know about a bit of it personally, but that's really just the best way I can describe the next game. It's also based on the holiday White Day, which is the uh, Korean variant of Valentine's Day. Uh, it's supposedly, I think, celebrated on like March 14th, and it's supposed to be like the inverse of Valentine's Day, but it still encompasses the general event, uh, you know, theme of this event. So, anyway, up next is going to be White Day, a labyrinth named School 2017, featuring Cloudmark. Take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eck. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I am Cloudmark27, and I will be playing White Day, a labyrinth named School. This is a remake of a game that came out in 2001. This game came out in 2017 for us here in the States. And uh, we'll get right into it. We're playing New Game Plus, Human Any Percent. And the first thing you're going to notice, we're going to be playing on hard mode. Uh, time will start when I hit start. So, three, two, one. So, as Ek uh, put it in the intro, this is a Korean horror dating sim. <clears throat> we get the Korean horror because we're in a spooky school. Um, after, you know, after hours, so it's all dark and spooky. And uh, there's ghosts everywhere, among other things. Uh, but we also have dating sim elements because there's multiple girls in this game. And you get dialogue choices with them. And those dialogue choices affect how much they like you and how, uh, you know, your, your relationship with them, basically. We're gonna be introduced to one right here, uh, or two right here. This is Ji Young, uh, Ji Hyun, and Sung Ah, my personal favorite, Sung Ah. Um, but as you can see at the bottom of the screen, I'm being gonna be mashing through my dialogue choices. We want to get a certain ending with a certain girl, so I gotta just pick, make sure I pick the right choices so I don't mess anything up. So we'll be talking to Sung Ah right here. She basically wants us to go get her textbook or whatever from a locked room. And to do that, we're going to have to climb through the air vents for it. Are you telling me you're going to vent? <laughs> oh, God. I was doing wires, I swear. <laughs> um, okay, so. As you saw right there, when I picked up that item, it didn't show anything. And that's a little tech called a menu cancel. So if you push backspace, like the frame after you pick up an item... The menu basically doesn't come up. It doesn't show anything. And that saves barely any time, but if you do that over the course of the entire run, then, you know, you get you get a couple seconds saved, and that's that means a lot. All right, so we got this ladder, and we're going to we're we're going to vent over here. Being being a little sus. And uh, I'm actually going to show this next cutscene. You would, you would usually skip every cutscene, but I'm going to show this next one because I think it's neat. And we're going to see a very special version of the one of the main antagonists in this game. Oh boy. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. This is what we got to look forward to. It's beautiful. Alright, let's go. That is my favorite costume in this game, and I'd never take it off. It's great. It's amazing. Alright, so this is basically like a tutorial of how the game is going to progress. It's basically figure out how to get to a certain area by doing certain things, and then you're going to figure out a puzzle in that area, and you're going to collect a talisman. Right now, we got to figure out how to get past this steam stuff. It's really easy. Just close these valves. Valves. And then we're just gonna move on this way. There we go. This is very, very slow to like get you into it, to really introduce you to how this game is gonna play out. So here we're gonna see our first ghost happening, I should say. Spooky. All right, so it turned on all this stuff, everything's spooky. We're gonna go figure out this puzzle real quick. And we did it, we won. And uh, the main objective of these things is we want to pick up these, these tokens. The tokens will allow us to move on to different parts of the school. Hello, sung -ah. We're going to talk to her again real quick. Okay. So after that, she's going to give us a key to go deeper into the school. And we're going to go say hi to the girl whose ending we're actually going to get. So we're going to go over here. And uh, we're going to talk to Ji Hyun. Hello, Ji Hyun. As you can see, she looks great in her Noel Vermilion costume. Have y'all ever played Blaze Blue? That's where this costume is from. 
So we want to get her good ending. So I have to make sure I pick the right choices. And then we're right after this cutscene, we're going to set up a little bit for a little later into the run. So we're going to make sure that's on and we're going to open that door. Uh, and then we're going to use our token that we gathered. So this is going to let us go deeper into the school. There is one downside to the cool tech of the item canceling is that you don't really know what you're skipping unless you have former knowledge of it. Oh yeah, 100%. So Because, um, uh, got No, go, go for it, go for it. Oh, I was just going to say, because, you know, I'm running this game, I know very well that those item pop-ups take a lot of time each time. Um, you have to kind of cancel all of them, but, like, these are pretty much instantaneous, and you're not even seeing the animation. But it's funny, because you're skipping something, but you're not even really seeing what you're skipping, so it doesn't really look like anything, but every single time, it really is more difficult than it sounds. Right, right, right. And, like, once you get into the, like, groove of it, then it becomes just, like, second nature and everything. Um, we just talked to Jimin. She is actually new to the remake of this game. She wasn't in the old the old game. Um, that's all we're gonna see of her in this run. <laughs> she has her own category, so you know she she gets the she gets her love and everything. But that's all we're gonna see of her in this run. And I put her in a Christmas outfit because I thought it looked nice. It does. Also, <laughs> uh, someone's gonna ask, what does New Game Plus do? It uh, has G Min. That's it. That's literally it. That, that that's the difference for New Game Plus. We just saw it. You just right. get a look at Jimin for a second. There's no exactly. benefit. This is just as hard as new game. It just you get Jimin. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't know if you can hear it on stream, but uh, Heeman's heart is pumping, and uh, there's a stamina system in this game where if you run too long, you start getting dizzy. Uh, the screen gets a little blurry, and uh, if you run too much, then you'll have to, you know, stop. Two, three, four, six. All right, so we had to get that code. Oh, that was a bad spawn. We had to get that code to open a certain thing. Oh, he's gonna hit me. That's okay. And okay, so the the janitor for that part actually has a couple of places that he can spawn. That was a pretty bad spawn for us, but we're okay. It's fine. Uh, the main point of that was we needed to get a code to get a key to open a door, and to do that. It doesn't matter the order you put it in for this, as long as you get all the numbers right. So we're going to get that, and we should be able to get over here before he blocks us. Alright, so see ya. He won't be able to catch up to us. Uh, that janitor has a bum leg, so he's not as fast as the first janitor that we saw in the cutscene. That guy is OP, so we're, we're stuck with the, right now we're with the lesser strong uh, janitor. All right, so now that we've got that key, we can go open this door over here. Yeah, we don't really have to worry about him chasing us, because once we get to the end of this hallway, we're going to trigger a cutscene, and that cutscene actually despawns the janitor. So it doesn't matter how close he is to us, he's gone. Bye, janitor. All right, so now we're going to go see the main girl of this game, the one where you would get the true ending and do her stuff. Uh... We're barely going to see her at all in this playthrough. So I gave her her best uh, costume so we can remember her. Oh, and God, I know which one it is. <laughs> I love this costume. I know exactly which one it is. Oh, boy. The Look Sega at... Dreamcast. <laughs> like I said before, this game came out in 2001. Uh, so they have the retro costumes. Nice. So I was looking down at the floor before we got there because you can actually pick up that key while it's loading in. So I did it at the at a good area. It's it's kind of hard to like tell where it's gonna be, but uh, I did it in a good area, so I got to pick it up while it was loaded in. So now we're gonna do a little more prep. We're gonna open this and we're gonna come to like the first like very big puzzle in this game. What we're gonna do is we're gonna see what date is on here. So that's 86. That means that the the code for this is. Uh, 5924. 5924. So, the code to this safe, it's one of three things, and that uh, document that we picked up basically tells us which code it is. And you just look at the very first number, and that'll tell you which code you have to put in. So, that's not the best RNG. The best RNG would have been if it was 96, but. It's honestly like maybe half a second's difference. 
All right, so now what we got to do, um, I don't know how many of y'all have, you know, Bulbasaur as your favorite Pokemon, but we're going to be killing some Bulbasaurs. So, sorry about that, but it just has to happen. Uh, we're using, I don't know, Toxic, sad. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. See a Bulbasaur. And I just call them Bulbasaurs just because they look like Bulbasaur's little back bulb thing. How to do. While they're doing and, this, uh, though, I saw a question in chat. Uh, it's asking, why did you go on hard mode? Why did I go on hard mode? Okay, so I'll actually... Uh, I'll be able to answer that later, but it changes some of the... how aggressive some of the enemies are. And uh, when it comes up again, I'll be sure to point it out. Well, you are sounds good. But that's the main reason we run this game on hard mode. Uh, it does make it a little scary because you do die in three hits. So if you uh, if you get caught in something or something bad happens, a little, little 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 scary. But uh, we're, we'll be coming up to the first boss here in a second. And this boss, you have to dodge his first attack. So you either dodge to the left or the right. It's random whichever one it is. So I want everybody in chat to put either a left or a right to see which way oh, we're going to dodge. Oh, it's going to be right. It's going to be you right. You think it's right? It's going to be right. All right. Oh, no. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see how many of y'all pick right. Or pick correctly, I should say. All right. I'm going to come up to Treebeard. I call him Treebeard. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Let's see who lives and who goes home. Let's see. It was left. All right. Time to die for me. Sorry, Ignisus. I'll tell your story. Well, and the second dodge is always the opposite one, so. They got me. <laughs> and then our uh, flamethrower uh, plant repellent thing. Gotta love it. All right, so now that we killed Treebeard, we can get his talisman or token that he was protecting. So we're going to go back to the room where we first talked to Soyoung, who is in her retro outfit. outfit. And that's pretty... This is the, pretty much the end of the first building. Uh, I would say the first building is probably the longest. So we're going to get it real quick. We're actually just gonna run into the wall to trigger this next. Wait, wait, wait. Best, best line. Ready? Tree. Tree. Okay. I, I know you love that line, Ectisis. So I had to, I had to get it for you. It's a funnel. It's, it's very, very nice. Yes, All right. So we're gonna make sure we pick the right stuff. Talking to Sunga. She's great. Mm -hmm. Sunga just likes to yell at us a lot, honestly. Even when you kind of side with her, but. She's still nice. She's still cool. All right. So now that we picked all of our stuff, we're gonna go on to the next to the next building. And the next building happened. Well, the next building I would say is a lot harder. It, I think it. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have to do in a very quick. Um, like you, you just have to do them in quick succession. So. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch. It's gonna be great. Let me go through here. I'm gonna turn away because a bright light goes. You can see it. Yeah, see that. I'll save everybody's eyes. Now we're gonna have some some baby rage. So I want everybody to get their baby rages because there's gonna be a lot of baby rage in this building. Get ready. Woo! There he is. That's a little guy. All right, so this building, we're going to start off with a lot of prep work for a little bit later. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open this door right here. And we're going to open this door, and we're going to get this key. Don't worry, she's just sleeping. She uh, she was partying out late last night. We're going to get this key. And then, our main objective here at the start is we need a code to the principal's office. Uh, the code can only be three numbers, or three sets of numbers. We're, we already know what the code is. But to trigger the flag to get the code to actually work is we have to open this door right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it, and I'm going to take a guess at what it is. 
And hopefully I get it on the first try. If not, uh, oops. But we'll see how it goes. All right, don't fail me. Eight, one, two, four, let's go. Don't fail me. Eight, one, two. Ooh, uh, four, two, one, eight. Oh, of course it's the last one. Two, eight, four, one. All right, um, we'll, we'll fix that in post, right? We'll fix that in post. Uh, so we're gonna do a little puzzle right here. Let's do this real desk puzzle. We need to, <laughs> we need to spawn the janitor so he gives us a key. And to do that, we gotta look at this right here. So he's gonna see the room he's in. You see the janitor. He actually has a key, and he's just gonna put it up on this shelf for whatever reason. So we're gonna have to dodge him right here. Oh, I didn't dodge him. That is okay. I might die in one hit, but we're gonna be okay. Um, I'm throwing for content. How about that? Uh, we're gonna close that door too. It was actually kind of scary. <laughs> Alright, here we go. What we have to do is we have to get a tape from this place, and we're going to see Sung Ah again. And since it's the spirit of Valentine's, we're actually going to see this, uh, what she says. <laughs> Are you flirting with me right now? Valentine's Day. Alright, here we go. So after that, um, we're going to be able to get a key to go to the third floor. And we're going to go see Ji Hyun on the third floor. So, Janitor's going to come walk up right here. I'm going to take a very big turn around here. Close that door. And that should give me enough time to get to Ji Hyun, which triggers a cutscene and despawns the janitor. Woo. So he's right behind me. It's okay. He's despawned. All right, so we're good to go. Don't be scared, Ji Hyun. It's just me. We're chilling. All right, so now Ji Hyun is actually uh, gonna uh, be with us. We gained a party member. She's gonna chill with us. The janitor won't spawn at all while she's with us, which is why we are nice to her this entire time. All right, little piano puzzle, a la Silent Hill. Uh, that's coming up next. Seven five eight two seven five eight two seven five eight two. Sorry, I gotta remember this. Seven five eight two. Okay, I got it. We have a little soy milk right here to recover some health. There we go. All right. So we're gonna grab ourselves here a picture piece. Uh, so we've been collecting those throughout this building, <clears throat> and we need them to complete. Um, a picture in one of the doors I opened earlier. So we're coming back, going down, and we actually opened this door at the very start. This one right here. So we're gonna put it over here. And we're gonna see that he's holding a vase. So now that we know that he's holding a vase, we gotta find that vase. And that key that I picked up at the beginning is gonna open the place to find the vase. We're gonna do a cool little tech right here. I'm gonna turn on the light while the cutscene. And you can see it turn on in the cutscene. Get your baby rages ready, right here. Oh. All right, so we found the vase, and we're gonna get the remote that is in the vase. Now we're gonna go back to where we got it. So there's a lot of running in this game. You're basically running the entire time. Ugh. Oh, nice. She I had enough room. Sometimes she doesn't give you enough room to run through there and you have to go around her, but that time she was nice. I liked it. All right, so we got a remote. We're gonna use it over here. Boop. Get this key. A lot of this game is puzzle, get a key, which unlocks another puzzle to get another key. All right, keep those baby rages coming because we're about to see the biggest baby rage ever. So get ready. Get ready. Alright, here we go. We're gonna actually lose Ji Hyun here because she's gonna uh, get scared and run somewhere. Here it is. Get ready. Here it is. 
Woo! Looks exactly like baby rage. I love it. All right. So we got to calm the baby down. First, I'm going to heal because I'm a little scared. All right. We're, we're good. We should be fine. We should be fine. So, remember where the baby was standing earlier? Where I went to get the vase and he was, you know, he was just chilling there? Yeah, we're going to go back there. There's something he wants there. We're going to, we're going to give it to him. So we're going to pick up this clay doll. And you'll be able to hear the heartbeat in a second. There it is. And we should have enough stamina to get all the way back to where we need to go. Like, just enough stamina. It works out pretty part well. part of the game's coming up, by the way. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. The part where uh, we find out that uh, He-Min is actually He-Man. He has calluses all over his hand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is also one of my favorite parts. All right, so, so it's um, time for some kiln gaming. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, if you don't mind me explaining this one, um, the Go puzzle here is you have to, like, heat the bronze statue, and that's, like, a 350-degree heater. Like, you're, you're cooking the statue, and this is going to be, like, boiling hot when you pull it out, and uh, he is just going to yank that out with his bare hands and throw it in his backpack. And I love this every time, because, the, like, he, it just out of the oven, and it just goes into his, uh, his It's backpack. red hot. Like, you can see how hot it is. He just grabs it. He doesn't He's matter all... to human. <laughs> He's all callous. <laughs> it's like a glove. Okay, but the heat does matter to the baby. So, we gotta cool it down a bit. So we're gonna come over here to the science room. Go to the only sink that is working. You actually figure that out by reading a document, but we already know it. So we're gonna cool it down. And I don't think this is how clay dolls work. I've never made a clay doll, so I couldn't actually tell you. But I feel like that would just like crack and stuff. I don't know. But uh, no, it's, a, it's a nice. To... It's nice. I don't know if you've ever been to like a Korean barbecue thing, but I tried eating meat off the grill and I boil my mouth. I really can't <laughs> imagine how hot that has to be. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. That's actually a, a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. A little baby. Don't worry, little baby. I got exactly what you want. So we give little baby a toy. You know, we pacify him. He does this thing. We make him happy. It's it's a nice story. Right, Chat so saying it would explode like a grenade. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, we can actually see the little baby right here. Now he's happy. Yay. Okay, so we finished the second boss, and that's the second building done. So after this building, um, in the next building, we're actually going to see the second janitor. And the second janitor is, you know, he's bigger. He's better. And I would say he's even stronger, too. Um, and he, he's, he's, he's just a, he's a big boy, okay? So he's going to be a lot more troubling to go against. But before that, we're going to talk to Sung Ah again. She's going to yell at us some more. Really? And then when we're basically we just tell her that Jihyun ran away by herself, and then she yells at us. Come on. Yep, sorry. Oopsies. Okay, but that is okay. She's not too mad at us because she's gonna help us in a bit. So that's the end of the second building, and here we go to the third building. So this third building, let me tell you, it's something. You got invisible floors. Super strong janitor. You got a bunch of spider ghosts. Some screaming ghosts. You got a mermaid. Did I say that? I don't remember if I said that. But uh, anyway, Sungha helps us right here and she takes out the first janitor, which is why we, you know, we fight the second janitor in this one. So she takes them out and she's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't help you because I wanted to. It's not like that. She call so, you Baka afterwards. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so thank you, Sunga. Now we're gonna go get. I gotta. I gotta mentally prepare myself for this because this is a. This is an ordeal. It's a big level. It's a, a lot it's, of content in it. It's crazy. Okay, so we got that yellow key card, and that what that yellow key card is gonna allow us to do is gonna open these yellow doors. So here we go. Here we go.
So whoever asked about why we do this on hard, doing this on hard makes this janitor very, very angry to the point where he'll do anything to get to us. And by anything, I mean even open this talisman door so I don't have to do anything about it. And so, we finished the third building. Yeah, normally the game wants you to like go all through the level. You're supposed to like do a, like a boss fight even, kind of. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to like, deal with a mermaid, but since the janitor's so aggressive, he thinks you're behind the door, and he'll just open it because he wants to beat you up. And uh, Cloudmark's able to skip this entire thing by just using the aggression. Yep, that's the, that's and the sole reason we run this game on hard. Because it skips the like the entire third building. It's great. It's lovely. All right, so we're coming up to the end. You can see over there. There's Ji Hyun. She's just chilling on the stage. And we're gonna come up to this final boss. Uh, but first, we have to solve the hardest puzzle in this game. It is honestly to a casual player. This one. All right, we did it. Hardest puzzle in the game. So that unlocks the door to the gym. I've actually never seen anything like unlock doors, a, me a, a mechanism unlock doors there or anything. But now we're gonna become the this is fine meme because everything is now on fire. So we're gonna, uh, our objective here is we need to get some fire extinguishers. But there are different kinds of fires. So different kinds of fires mean different kinds of fire extinguishers. Because you can't put out an electrical fire the same way you put out a gas fire. That's just, you know, that's, it's fire. So we're going to have to collect fire to dispute that. Wait, what's up? I don't know enough about fires to dispute that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a ton of fires. We love fires. And uh, if we ha if I could get some oohs in chat. Oh, yeah, we, we have all oohs. An absolute banger playing the soundtrack right now. You thought the cat music was great? Uh, this is the, let's say, music. Oh, yeah. This is great. I love it. Oh, I feel like to call it uh, Yoko Ono, the o Yoko Ono special. There you go. That's a good one. All right, so I'm just going to fully heal because I'm I'm a little scared, but we'll, we'll be fine. I'm just doing it to be safe. And fun thing about this fire is all the fire that you can see, that's not actually their hitboxes. It's not actually their hitboxes. Um, I'll show an example right now. We're going to turn to the right, and we're going to walk through this fire. So... The hitboxes for each fire is invisible. I don't know where it is. The game doesn't know where it is. But there's certain parts like that where you can just walk through fire. And there's other parts where it looks like there's no fire, but there's actually fire. So you get hurt. It's not that troubling, especially since there's like heals over here and everything. But the ghost right here, Yun Mi is her name. She does like 80% of your health if she hits you, so if you're even a little bit hurt, it's a little scary. Heeman would still totally be roasted right there. That's a, that's a lot of fire popping out of that door. It's all the calluses. <laughs> that's, he used his hands to block them. He's a calloused man. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna do this last fire right here, and we're gonna get the valve to turn on. See how I got hit, hit right there? There was no fire. What was that? Uh, we got so the valve to turn that. on the sprinkler system. So, we're gonna come over here. She doesn't follow you anywhere besides the gym, so. We're good right here. I'm just gonna turn it, turn all the water on. All right, so we do that and we save Ji Hyun. And remember, we're getting her good ending. So we gotta make sure we say the right things to her. I'm really fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so basically, we're gonna talk to her. Uh, time will be when the timer comes up on screen. So we still got a bit. We have this. I, I want to show this last cutscene in the spirit of Valentine's Day, because it's happy, and we oh, we find love. It's all right. Uh, and yes, I do have. I saw some people in chat saying Blaze Blue. This is Blaze Blue. I got He Min and Ragna, wow. and Ji Hyun in uh, Noel. So, this is great. I thought it would be nice Did for them to match you? since we're getting their good ending. 
This is honestly very sweet. Like, uh, G Ji Hyun's not my favorite, but it's nice. It's nice to just chill. The others are fine too, right? I hope they come before long. I really want to get out of here. Cue romantic music. Now we need some mood lighting. Here we go, here we go. All according to plan. And then wait for it. Remember, White Day, we need to give chocolates. That's the whole point of White Day. We did it. All right, time will be coming up. And now. All right. 30 seconds under, I'll, I'll take that, I'll take that. RTA was about 30 minutes flat. Oh, perfection, perfection then. So that was a light day. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, uh, that was the Heeman Any Percent. It's a really easy run to pick up. And then yeah, there's a lot of little techniques that you have to do throughout the run consistently that makes it, you know, a little harder to, you know, get a really, really top tier time in. But uh, so it's, fun to pick up. it's fun to play. Uh, you wanted to show off Hell Mode, and you want to show up a very quick run of it. Oh boy. So there's a, there's a mode harder than hard, and it's called Hell Mode. And um, we're going to be doing a run of Hell Mode. So, uh, can I start whenever, or do I... Yeah, I changed the estimate. It's, uh, I have a three-minute estimate, because, um, the way Hell Mode works is that, uh, anything you do counts as an ending, including... Well, let's just watch. Alright, so in three, two, one, let's go. Got, gotta love Hell Mode. So I actually learned of this run. I learned the technique for this run from another great uh, white day runner, uh, Almina. She is fantastic at this game. <laughs> and this... Yep, definitely shout outs to her. <laughs> yeah, shout outs to her. She's uh, one of the biggest runners in, in the white day community. Um, a fellow mod. She's great. So it's going to start a whole lot like... Mm. Uh, regular hard mode or whatever. So we're gonna talk to them right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta get to the juicy stuff. Fine. I will keep it to myself. Just something. Skip. There we go. Ethan and I didn't know what we were gonna. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> off. <laughs> Ethan and I didn't. Know... Hey, sing off. This is what the cat. Oh god, I thought you went to the janitor. All right, I get what the category is. So let me explain. Um, by interacting with her knees or um, the the character is going to get mad that you keep going down there, and eventually she is going to be prompted to kick you because you're being rude. Uh, hell mode puts your health on effectively zero, so you can just sort of almost immediately die. <laughs> She get like I said, uh, Sunga likes to yell at you, Thank so you. we're helping her get her aggression out. Hey, what are you doing? I'm I'm just chilling. I'm just chilling. And also, uh, it takes two know. hits to die right now. Mm -hmm. um, getting the janitor would take too long, so the first hit happens in the first room because you, you know you get the first kick there, and then once you kind of load in again, the anger meter will reset. So you pretty much just filling the anger meter twice, leading to. Uh, Let's say death. Get lost. And the the weird kicker about hell mode is that uh, hell mode counts death as an ending. It's an immediate game over. It counts as an actual ending. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no continuing. There's no other options. It's just, hey, you got an ending. It's death. So uh, anyway, I'm pretty sure that's right here. <laughs> there's time. Yeah, there we go. Two minutes, nine seconds. I got. Beautiful. I beat my record. Let's go. Great job! What Ooh. what a what a record right there. 
Yeah, that was anyway, a... with that a fantastic showing of a run, uh, Claude Mark, do you have any uh, shout outs you'd like to give? Um, just shout out to all the other White Day runners. Uh, when I first started running this game, it was me and Crazy Cider for the longest time, but now there's a whole lot more people that have come and run this game, uh, including Ecdysis. Um, so shout out to Almina, uh, Floor, uh, Drifeplin. Uh, Cat Link, she's also she also runs in. All the other new runners, um, I think it's a very good community of runners. Uh, we're very welcoming, um, and it's a, it's a really fun run. It's not really hard to learn the route, so if you're looking for a new run that's not very long and it's it's fun to do and has a great community, come come join us. As well, if anyone to find you anywhere, where can they find you? Uh, all of my socials are at cloudmark27, so on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, it's all at cloudmark27. All right, well, thank you again for the White Day run. Uh, it's been a fun time, and we still have one more run on deck for the night, so don't go anywhere. However, we are going to be going over to a quick break. Uh, this will be the time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, and do all that jazz. Uh, as well, uh, alongside our recurring shows, GD Hotfix also has multiple week-long events with Frost and Frame Fatales. Uh, these woman-led events are twice a year supporting other great charities, so go ahead and check those out. I uh, use the uh, exclamation mark FF to find more information on that. Anyway, we'll be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. We're back to speedruns from the crypt, and I hope that you enjoy that White Day speedrun. Uh, it's really nice having a game that kind of really hits on, like, very specifically, like, a Valentine's Day horror game. I know it's not exactly Valentine's Day, but White Day is pretty much, like, the inverse of Valentine's Day. I think the actual difference is that it's... I think it's specified that men give gifts to women, uh, at least in the, uh, the Korean culture for that. So it's kind of nice to have a game that kind of shows that in a horror way. Uh, anyway, last game, uh, not least, uh, I'm going to be running it myself, actually. I don't get to do these very often, but I get to show you one of my favorite games, and a game that is uh, truly about a man looking for his wife. It is going to be Sanhol 2, a, a classic game that all of you probably know at one point or another. Anyway, we can just uh, hop on right over there, because I don't really need to introduce myself any more than that. So, uh, right now you can see we're probably on the screen, we're probably on the main menu. Um, I'm actually going to quit the game. Uh, the reason for this is because Sonal 2 has something called, uh, RNG manipulation. So I need to reboot the game and get some very special settings running before I actually start running the game. Uh, the reason why is this is going to allow me to pretty much do, uh, all the puzzles in the game later to the best degrees possible. Uh, in order to do this, I'm going to let the intro screens play out, and then once I get into the game, I'm immediately just going to be going in as fast as I can. And now we're on hard mode. Time can start now. So, the cool thing about Sonal 2 is uh, it uses an in-game timer, so loads don't matter all that much. Uh, there's a lot of cool tricks that you can do. Uh, the first one's actually going to be the classic game saving. Uh, on the PC version of the game, this is going to allow me to break the game in a few ways, uh, including being able to just walk without needing a map. Uh, as well, I'm going to constantly pushing the button. It's not mashing, it's more just rhythmic tapping. Uh, the reason for this is it's going to be constantly regenerating my stamina. Uh, this is going to allow me to stay at 100% movement speed throughout the game. Uh, I want to be moving faster, because obviously if I stay at 100%, that, that just will be more efficient than if I go down to like 50. Uh, the game normally will kind of creep down, so just having t any kind of text on the screen or going through a new room will refresh that. So, it's not a super intricate thing, just understand we'll have a lot of saves at the end of the game. So, if you're watching the whole way through, you're going to see, hey, why does he have like a thousand saves? Or like a few thousand, probably. It's because I'm pretty much pushing the button every single moment in the game. The first few minutes of the game are also just kind of running through the town, so we talked about a few things. Before that, uh, there's a very little trick you can do here, uh, where if you start mashing the pause button, you can skip one frame early. I missed it. Uh, it's okay, because it really doesn't have a large amount of time save. It's like maybe a second at most. But it's still cool if you can get it. Anyway, now that we're running through the town again, I can talk a little bit more about some of the other features of game saving and how that breaks the game. So, this is the PC port of the game, meaning they didn't have a lot of time to test out this feature, and they realized PC players like a lot more of a manual save system. Um, this is going to allow me to break the game even more than I already talked about, because I'm going to be able to hold text on the screen. 
Uh, that's not going to sound like a lot now, but that's going to have a few elements throughout the whole run where I'm going to be able to not only keep the stamina up, but I'll be able to skip, like, major portions, and I'll be able to just... I really avoid, like, fights, avoid bosses, and we'll kind of get more into that once we approach it. A lot of the games will be basic movement, uh, so that's why I like actually playing it on hard mode. Uh, you may notice the category right now is hard. Um, I like hard mode a lot. It kind of lets you see the boss fights without just making them one shot. Uh, not a lot of runners like to do hard, so I always like showcasing it how I can, just because I think it's a really neat category to see. Alright, so what I was talking about was the idea of text holding. Uh, here's the first real example. There's no reason to go back. I'm going to look for Mary. So now that I have this up, I'm going to keep this up for as long as I really can. Like, there's going to be a moment when I get to an alley, I'm going to drop it. But I want to hold this for now. Uh, holding this is going to allow me to skip that first fight. Now, if you're wondering, oh, does this really save time? It's just a fight. Um, I've done a category before where you have to do that fight, and it's about a minute and a half longer or so. So just by holding text up here, I'm already saving a minute and a half in comparison to not holding this text. Uh, it's immensely important. However, uh, one of the downsides of this game is that it's kind of a buggy port and sometimes the text can just drop. Ideally, you don't want it to drop. If it does, well, that's bad. <laughs> so, I'm going to try keeping it up as much as I can. Uh, it's not super hard to do so as long as you just keep pushing the game saved button. Now, there are easy ways of canceling it. Like, if you push the X button or any like the confirm actions, it will immediately vanish and everything will load back in. Um, you're about to see the skip in action when I pass the blood on the ground here. Uh, this blood on the ground normally like, oh, hey, there's blood, but this way, hey, look, I avoided it. And now we're able to pass it entirely, and I can just avoid having to do the fight. However, the game's still going to be broken because of this. Uh, what I really have been doing is I prevented assets from loading in um, outside of, like, basic assets. So obviously, you know, there's the road, the houses, but, like, you're, I'll look on the left, there's going to be a shadow of a car, and I teleported it back in. Uh, a lot of the stuff in this game don't doesn't really load until you make it load in, which is why the cutscene doesn't come up. Center items won't load in. And speaking of items, the animation also breaks. So normally, like when you hit this back end of the alley, you get a key to the apartments. Uh, I'm just gonna pick that up with my knees, which is going to be faster than having to bend over to pick it up, and that's going to just happen like that. Now, another fun part that's unique to hard mode that we haven't really seen yet, but I'm going to be game saving a lot more than usual. If you watch the standard any percent run, you don't really have to game save indoors. Normally your stamina is not going to run out at the part where you need to, what's the word, kind of go through the doors. Like you'll always refresh per entry of room. However, on hard mode, they added a bonus mechanic. Uh, that mechanic is going to be tripping. Uh, Silent Hill 1 kind of has a tripping where you could bump into doors. Silent Hill 2 on hard mode has tripping. It's a very odd mechanic that they brought back in but the fun fact about this is for some reason keeping up game save will actually remove tripping so all you have to do is keep saving even indoors and that'll prevent you from tripping inside uh, i'll actually showcase that once we're inside for right now we are now inside of the apartments uh, first things first, I also like to grab a drink while in here. I'm going to need a lot of resources throughout the run. I've been taking that because it's much safer and it keeps me more alive. So I like having that. Uh, you may also notice uh, that enemies are going to start spawning in. Hard mode summons more enemies, they do more damage. A bunch of stuff like that. And before we can make progress in the apartments, I need to grab more items. The first one's going to be a flashlight. Uh, Silent Hill 2 is a game that's heavily dependent on light sources, meaning you can't open doors in some cases, you can't use items, you can't grab items, unless James can physically see them. So by having the light on, that means, hey, now I can pick these items up, and there's only a few items that I need to pick up or else the game won't happen. Like, one of the doors later on is going to be like, hey, you're not, uh... You know, the door's locked, you can't get in here. But by having the gun right here and the key I'm about to grab, uh, the door will suddenly decide to let me in. We have our first weapon, which is the gun. Uh, the next one's going to be right over here at the key. Now, when you're wondering, does it matter on the order I do this? Yes, actually. Uh, you always want to grab the gun before grabbing the key. Uh, grabbing the key will spawn enemies in that hallway. There's no enemies right now because it's supposed to be like a cutscene with like Laura, who's like the little girl who follows you around. But I despawn enemies there. Also, but the game save allows me to further break the game because I can skip the scream. It's very minor, but I can continue running. And also, I know I did this right when I see Pyramid Head. However, he's not red. So I hold the gun. Now he's red. And now I can load the game back in. 
All right, so we're about to hit the major part of the game that I think has changed through older routings of this game. Uh, if you haven't really watched a Silent Hill speedrun since like the last major like AGDQ SGDQ, uh, this game has had significant changes. Namely, we now use something called RNG manipulation. Um, I booted the game in a very particular way, which is letting both of the intro screens roll and then me just, you know, starting the game as quickly as I can. Also, let's see if I can get a trip going. Nope, not yet. So. The clock is going to be random. The very first clock in the game is going to be a randomized value. Uh, that value can be, you know, any of the 12 hours in some times. Now, why does this matter? From that clock answer in the starting position, I'm going to look at that and I'll internalize that value and go against a chart. So that looks to be, what, 955? That's actually really good RNG, by the way. I was either 9.55 or 9.56 or so. Um, I have a few seeds on my table that that might be. I'm pretty sure that was 9.55. So, what does that mean for us? It now means I know every answer for the rest of the game, most likely. Right? I can't believe it. Also, I do read chat during these, so hello, chat. So early in the game, I mentioned this is a game that runs based on an in-game timer, meaning I can watch this cutscene if I want to. Uh, Pyramid Head is uh, <gasps> celebrating Valentine's Day with some demons. Now, it's very likely that I am on seed number 33. Uh, seed number 33 shows a 955. It's either be 955 or 956. I felt a little bit slow. It's probably 955. Meaning, the hospital answers are going to be 7851 and 9747. Uh, the cube is going to be a sideways and an upward flip. Uh... I will get the blind arsonist on the first try, and the briefcase will be town. Uh, this is most likely going to be the answer. If not, I'll read the other set of answers. But because of that, now I know every single puzzle answer in the game because I've manipulated the game's RNG. Also, this time to check doesn't count against me because while the real timer underneath me is running, this timer is not the one that speedrunners will be going against. It's the end game timer that they'll be going against. So now that I know that, we can continue forward. And yeah, there's a lot of fun stress in this game. Now, another cool part about this game is that I need a lot of ammo. So, on normal boss fights, or let's say any percent boss fights, you will kill bosses in essentially, like, one hit. You can one-shot the bosses very easily. On hard mode, you are going to be using a ton of ammo. That is true. Chat is pre-recorded. You're not wrong about that. You're not wrong. Also, let's see if I can kind of showcase what the trip looks like here. Because you have to be very careful also trip. So by mashing game saved, I won't be tripping now. I can just run all the way and I don't have to worry about that. I still do need to be careful because you don't want to save right before picking up an item. Uh, if you do so, you can bug out the game and the text is going to get really funky. So that can even break the game. Uh, luckily, it does have quick fixes because, hey, even if my computer, even my game crashes, one of the upsides about this game, well, uh, what's the word? I'm saving literally every frame, so all I have to do is save the game and reload the game because I saved. Uh, while it's not allowed for regular runs because you want to do it in one time, um, you don't really care too much about marathons because for any kind of like professional showing, you can just reload that save. There's no rules against that. Also, splits are arbitrary and they don't matter. Alright, so the next part of the game, now we get some puzzle answers, is I'm going to need some coins. Uh, these coins are going to allow me to ultimately beat the apartments and solve the major puzzle. However, I need to grab a few things in this first area. And we're going to be introducing some, some new tech here. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is once I enter the trash can, I'm going to be mashing save after I grab the coin. Uh, that's going to allow me to move during the black screen here, and you can see I gain some distance. The further you can go, the better you'll be. Um, and it's kind of an awkward area on the timing, but it's kind of one of those things that you don't really notice it, but it definitely saves time. And thank you for the kind words, by the way. I've seen some of the nice messages. Also, oddly enough, uh, they don't let you do a very particular skip in a hard mode. Uh, there's a skip on any percent, beginner, normal, and all those, like, the easier categories, which allows you to fall cancel. You can alt you can change your weapon when you're falling, and that allows you to cancel the animation of the stumble. However, on hard mode, it doesn't work. I really don't know why. It just doesn't work for some reason. Also, look, it's Eddie. Happy Valentine's Day, he says. That sounds right. 
Also, yes, game saved. Uh, I want to mention once again that with the game saved, this is all apart just because of the PC port. It's not really a problem with the developers. I know a lot of speedrunners will go like, oh, the devs really uh, phoned this one in. No, the developers worked hard on this game. Uh, the thing is, the PC port ended up being a little bit rushed, and they didn't have time to really test out the game save feature. And this isn't a problem with the developers. This is more of just kind of just a uh, design flaw, I suppose, because they're adding new elements. They don't know really how they interact with the game. So we as speedrunners are able to kind of break this version and make this happen. Which makes for a very interesting run. Now we're going to be doing the uh, central finale of the apartments. Uh, we're going to be using those coins on the puzzle. And before we do that, we actually do need to grab one more coin. The coin answers are always the same, but since I'm on hard mode, uh, both for riddle and for action, um, I have to do with hard mode answers. Uh, one of the things here is this is going to be a slightly different uh, answer than you may be used to. So the way I usually remember it is gold 5, silver 2, snake 5. Or snake, snake 4. So right now when I get in, it's going to be gold 5. And then once I finish this, I'm actually going to pause the game. Uh, the reason why is because that's going to allow me to just instantly buffer back the item menu. Uh, doing this... Uh, let's me save some time on the IGT because normally the game doesn't want you to immediately go back in But by pausing the game I'm able to immediately go back in and that will just let me go through pretty easily And there we are We now have the house key and we're able to get all of that I don't need to do it on the last one as well because you can immediately pick up the items also. No, we're not going to start over We've just started Also, my name is pronounced Ek Dysis. like Eck and dice, like rolling dice. Okay, so now we have everything we need. We have the final key. We're going to be getting to our first boss fight, and I have all the bullets. Uh, I have to count my shots very particularly because I need to do a lot of damage. Uh, we're going to be entering the Pyramid Head boss fight. Uh, very iconic fight, very iconic man. Uh, however, his boss fight's going to be a lot easier than you think it is. Uh, by matching aggression with aggression, I'm going to be shooting him about 55 times. Uh, what I usually do is I count four reloads, so one. But the two ways of beating him are either one, you wait him out, two, you do enough damage. So here's two. Uh, he'll never attack me because I'm constantly walking into him. He's not going to be able to get in the position to attack me, and he's just not going to be able to do it. Three. Also, yes, this is a classic game. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Alright, so now I'm on four. So I'm going to count to five now. So one, two, three, four, five. With that, the bell has rung, Pyramid Head is gone, and it makes for a pretty fun boss fight. It'll always be about 55 shots on hard mode. Um, on easy mode, you just run into him, fire 6 shots. On normal, you can actually wait in the corner, and you can get him in a really weird position. Or you can keep walking into him. But by walking into him, I kind of mess with his AI, and he's not really able to do much there. As you can see. And now we just have to wait for him to leap, and then that is the first boss fight. Can't save. Oh. And there it is. That is the first fight of the game, the first boss. Um, that's why I had to get the extra pistol ammo. Um, if, you don't, if you don't have enough, you'll have to just keep running around, and it's not very good. Also, the run is live. However, chat is pre-recorded. See, I get to have the fun of this, being both the host and the runner. So... The run is indeed live. However, you, the Twitch chat, are pre-recorded. I get to make that once per show, and it's always a fun time. Also, here's a fun glitch. For some reason, you can game save all here. Hey, look, it's a park. Just a regular park, right? Mary. Oh, it's broken. Well, yeah, I mean, he served his purpose. He ate 55 bullets, and now he's gone. Also, look, it's Maria. It's our dead wife. Also, the plot of this game, for anyone who is unaware, you're looking for your dead wife, and you're in love with her. That's really it. I didn't really stress too much about the plot of the speed games. I figure, one, most people watching either know about the game, or two, you'd want to play the game yourself and figure out the plot. So, man's looking for his dead wife. He might find her, he might not. You don't quite know. And right now, we have the world's best uh, escort mission. 
a lot of uh, escort quests, escort missions kind of have you having to protect the person. Uh, I don't want to do that. That's slow. Luckily for me, though, Maria will always follow me uh, to the max distance, which is very good for me. So if I make it to any room, she'll enter the room along with me, which that saves me a lot of time once I keep moving. As well, since I missed the first weapon of the game, I'll be grabbing a pipe right now. Uh, if you don't grab this pipe, you will actually softlock the game later because I skipped one of the major weapons in the game. Normally you wouldn't have that, but now that we do. Fog is spooky, that's all there is to it. Did you find the lady you're looking for? Also, one of my favorite songs in the game that lasts like all of 30 seconds max. Also, you have Eddie eating pizza. It's a fun cutscene. Uh, we've some of the runs have ran a bit late today, so I'm just gonna try to make up lost time. All right, so now we're gonna be going to the hospital. Uh, the hospital's gonna be the next major area of the game, and that's where the run really is gonna start picking up. Uh, I mentioned earlier for those of you who are just tuning in that I have I know every single answer for the rest of the, of the run. Um, Meaning, once I get to the hospital, I'll truly be able to see if I do know these answers. If I do know these answers, that means that the RNG manipulation work, and I will now know every answer in the game. Now, the reason why this is important is because normally you'd have to find the answers normally, and that takes time to look at books, look at walls, and, you know, discover what the answer would be in addition to typing it. And this way, I only need to type it in, and hey, that's much faster than having to actually find it. Uh, in total, with all the stuff, I think it's like a good minute in some change of time save, just because I don't have to deal with randomized values anymore. I mean, they're still pseudo-random because the first one's randomized, and there's still going to be better answers than not, but even with the bad answers, they're still going to be better than the alternative of having to find the answer. Exactly. Alright, so now that we're in the hospital, the mage goal is we're going to be going to the four locked box. Uh, this requires two physical keys and two uh, number keys. Uh, the number keys are going to be 7851 and 9747, if I have this right, which I hopefully do. Uh, the other physical keys I'm going to be grabbing throughout the run. Also, like I mentioned, Maria is going to be very important right now, so I need to make sure she doesn't get damaged. How do we find out the clock tells the answers? Great question. So a while back when I was personally doing speedruns in this game, um, a guy came into my stream by the name of Silent Hill 2 Luck. Uh, Silent Hill 2 Luck, also we're grabbing a needle and a shotgun right here, so that's going to help me out later with combat. Silent Hill 2 Luck uh, came in during my, one of my runs when I was in the hospital, and he told me all the codes of the game. And given that these are four-digit values that are entirely randomized, I kind of laughed it off. I was like, I, you, you can't guess them, man. And then once I got there, the guess he said was exactly right, horrifying me and pretty much everyone. Uh, as a community, this kind of blew up to a whole thing, and we learned how RNG manipulation started to work. By letting the two first screens go all the way, we were able to get consistent answers, and we're able to now manipulate the RNG in our own way. Also, this answer will always be the same. It's just a T. Let's remember it. One, three, two, eight. Now, you might be wondering, hey, you've been taking any hits, your health's really good. Or, hey, dude, you've been taking too many hits, you suck. Either one is fine, because it doesn't matter right now. Uh, at the hospital, you will always have the same amount of health. So if I get hit, doesn't matter. If I don't get hit, doesn't matter. I mean, obviously, there's the stumble, but what's going to happen right now is once I'm on the roof, I will always take a predetermined amount of damage and end up on a, you know, low health. It's near death. He's going to slap me. Once again, 7851 and 9747. I'm now low on health, but that's why I'm grabbing medkits, because now I'm healed. Also, you know, I may have missed saving my game. I may, I may have just missed it. Uh, another thing to mention on hard mode is the nurses are mad aggressive. Uh, they're also kind of randomized in their spawns, so I need to be very careful not to get hit by them. Alright, so let's watch right now. If I did this right, uh, these two keys open the box, and like I said, it will be 7851 and 9747. That it is! Okay, 7851. Uh, 7851. Okay, so now I'm a wizard. I decided to start running this game. I've always liked this game when I was younger, and I wanted to speedrun it. Uh, it's kind of a weird thing. Uh, I guess talking about myself for a moment here, since now we know that the RNG manipulation works. 
Um, I, as a speedrunner, um, I run speedruns in the crypt, and a big motivation behind running the show is that I personally run over 120 horror games now. Uh, I like to add to that number very frequently. I learned four new games very recently, including Ao Oni, Tormented Souls, uh, Psycho no Satoka, and uh, Inscription. I run a lot of horror games. I'm a very big fan of the genre, and I just think it's a cool area of speedrunning that not a lot of people do. So I clearly have to go to one of the absolute best ones, which was Sonal 2. Um, this is actually one of the first games I actually ran at a GDQ. I was able to run this game in 2018 at a GDQ X event, which is the one they did at TwitchCon. So that is how I got into it. Also, it is random. I just manipulated it. Anyway, boss fight time. Uh, the way this is going to work is I need to get anywhere from 5 to 6 shots on each boss. I want to be very careful about how close they get because they can attack me while it's going. Also, now we can learn the next lesson of Sonal 2. Uh, counterattacks in this game will do a load of damage. Uh, if I get a counterattack, that does an increased amount of damage. Damage isn't exactly flat, it's scale. So the shotgun, it's proximity, it's counterattacks, it's things like that. Uh, that one died very quickly because I got a lot of counterattacks in. Alright, that one's now dead. Uh, this is actually a near-perfect fight. The third one is now going to spawn up here. And lately my favorite game has been Siren Blood Curse. And yeah, it'll be fun, Erston. There we go. It is. Gonna dodge less feet. And I have done Fatal Frame. And GG on that fight. That was a very good mid-game fight. Uh, flesh Lips can be one of the tougher fights in middle lane. Um, just with the feet trying to attack you together. Um, it's very easy to be defeated. I only run horror games. If it's not a horror game, I don't run it. So I do not run Mario 64. But yeah, my favorite game is probably like Dead Rising, Clock Tower, Sonal 2, Sonal 1, Tyron Blood Curse. Stuff like that. Again, I think that's the best story, Sonal 2. Easily Sonal 2. This game is a beautiful game. It's also a really fun speedrun. This game's quite easy to get into with hard mode having some unique strats. Alright, so now we're in the other world of the hospital. It's now shifted. Uh, we're on the other side of things. I'm not speedrun Cry of Fear. Uh, I add new games, though, all the time, and I try to add as many as I can. Funny enough, every game on today's show, I have sped ran at one point or another. And it's kind of a fun way of how I know a lot of the ones that happen on this show. Uh, I've done Catherine, I've done uh, White Day, and obviously I'm doing Sonal 2. So. I do a lot of games, and a lot of the games that come on the show I've done at one point or another, or, you know, would like to do. I'm just a big fan of the genre. What I think Roller Rose, I've ran it before, it's fun. Costs a lot of money. Alright, so now that we have Maria back, we've also got in a ring. This whole puzzle is going to be getting two rings, really. That's all I really care about. The oldest horror game I've ran was Sweet Home. Okay. So. I do horror and horror adjacent, yes. The mummy Mummy's a horror movie. A lot of people ask me, is this really horror? The answer is usually yes. The answer will always be yes. If I've done it, probably yes. Or to some degree. I, I, I have a page on speedrun.com. Might be easier than me uh, answering it a bunch. But, now we're going to the next part of the game. Because, on hard mode, normally you would be getting a boss fight here. And this boss fight is the Pyramid Head Chase. Now, on any percent and on normal, you can run fast enough where it's not going to be an issue. Oh, uh, you'll see, you'll see some, uh, army. Uh, you'll see some right now. Just, um, normally what will happen is you can run past Pyramid Head. However, on hard mode, he's too fast. So what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be mashing the game save button and my map button right now. Uh, by doing that, I get Gant saved. Now, what Gantt save does is it allows me to save in a location I shouldn't be saving in. Now, if I'm pulling the Too Dark to read the map up, that's now going to allow me to never spawn in Pyramid Head. He no longer spawns in this area, meaning Maria won't die. Uh, Maria's very likely to die if I do this. However, the game's gonna have some weird properties because I broke it. The subtitles are now broken and will give me save locations, kind of changing some of the theme of this cutscene. 
So we have to save anywhere. Name undecided. Boris. Oh no, she died. What was her name again? Oh yeah, it was parking lot. There it is. Goodbye, parking lot. Parking lot is now dead. I'm sorry if you enjoyed parking lot. She's dead. Exactly. Gantz saved. So, that is how that works, and now we're kind of entering a more chill moment of the run with more of the streets. Also, in terms of ending choice, it's kind of weird with what we're going to be getting. Uh, usually, I get Maria, oddly enough. I almost always get Maria on hard mode. I don't know why. Um, I want to say it's something with the amount of time you have to spend with Maria, plus us kind of breezing through the final cutscene. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure why. Also, you can move during this cutscene. But usually I get Maria. Maria is actually one of the better ones to have in Italy because it just, she's closer to you. Uh, the three you can have normally are in water, Maria, and leave. Um, leave is the best ending, in water is a sad ending, and Maria is like the bad ending. Uh, usually you get the bad ending. There's no real way to kind of get this going, but that's how it tends to work. Also, I will say my own personal merit as well, uh, if you haven't enjoying any of this run, consider checking me out on Twitch. Uh, I do a lot of horror games in my own time. Uh, lately I've been doing a lot of uh, Dead Rising and Tormented Souls, and I try to get a lot of games on my rotation. I'm pretty much running something new every week, or something different very often. And I try to also grind a lot of the games I do like, like Sound 2. So I can do my one plug of the run in the middle. Because usually whenever I'm running the show personally, I post my I post the runners' links in chat, so if you have been curious, you can find them there. But I can't quite do it myself, because I can't alt-tap from the scam, or else I'll break. So. Thank you. Yeah. And that is the case. Anyway, right now we're going to be hitting the streets once again. However, there's going to be an odd quirk this time. Earlier in the game, I had the big game save and I skipped over that blood. So, the blood doesn't leave the streets. The blood will always be in the streets. And I need to pass the blood again. So, if you're doing math right here, if you're adding the calculations in your head, that cutscene is still active in the game because I never watched it. Meaning, at this point in the game, I'm not supposed to watch it, and the game won't know what to do and will break if I walked into that. So, I have to skip it once again. I am McDysis. Yes. I am. Uh, so once again, I will be, uh, what's the word? Skipping the cutscene. Uh, I have to hold the game saved until the camera changes, and at this point, I can now grab the wrench, and then I will activate it once again on this tech, so I can avoid that cutscene once more. Uh, doing this still saves that minute and a half from earlier, and allows me to keep playing the game. Uh, at this point, I don't want to break the game, so... Yeah. I think the last time I've done this, by the way, on any type of hotfix, uh, my whole house powered down. I don't want to jinx anything, but I, I'm just saying it's one of those cases where I feel a lot better about uh, the run. Uh, if, you, if you want to see that one, I did that during the West Coast weekend that I think GDQ did last year, two years ago, last year. I don't remember which time, but my whole house had a power outage. It's like, oh, that's bad. Well, hopefully nothing breaks. So, yeah. That is the case. Also, my phone buzzed. Oh no, I left it on my desk. It's gonna buzz. Well, hopefully it doesn't buzz much more. And like this point of the game, it's usually really chill. Um, it's just you're walking through the streets, avoiding the nurses, not getting hit. Uh, however, there is a few things to understand even at this part of the game. If you forget the wrench, you will have to walk back, and it's horrible. If you forget the key, you will have to walk back, and it's horrible. I mean, you don't want to break the game in that way. We break the game in good ways, not bad ways. Runs haunted, runs haunted. I've had it happen very well. We're not doing Great Knife Only. That would be a four-hour run, and that is a meme category that I have uh, helped pioneer more. Um, but we will be seeing some of the Great Knife during this run, and we'll have some uh, amazing endgame strats uh, coming along with that. 
Anyway, here's the wrench. Uh, we're gonna be using that now. Uh, and this now lets me get the key. If you forget the key, you will have to do the ultimate walk of shame, which is the saddest part of the game, uh, hands down. And you know, every time I do it, it's just like, oh god. That's like, I think a good five minutes of just walking back and forth. It is horrible. I don't really do a lot of the uh, star-based runs because they're not fun. I have done Plank Only, though. Plank Only is fun. I can beat the entire game on hard mode with just a plank, and I have done the entirety of the routing of that category. Uh, it took me a very long time to beat the final bosses with just a plank, because the final bosses of Silent Hill 2 are immensely difficult. They are incredibly hard to deal with. So... I have done a lot of odd Silent Hill content at one point or another, and I have even a, lo a lot more odd things coming up. Hell, dumb fact, with more Silent Hill games, I had to buy an Xbox Series X so I can speedrun Silent Hill Downpour. Often I forget the key, not too much th these days. To run Downpour, I had to buy one, because all the Downpour runners have Series Xs to be competitive. And the only way to be competitive is by having modern hardware to run a game that came out in 2012 that was almost universally panned. Speedrunning can get to some weird levels, that's all I'm going to say. There are certain games I never thought I'd be doing certain things with, but that's how it truly goes. Anyway, back to the actual run that we've stopped running, we've now entered the tourist area. Uh, there's gonna be a really long staircase. Now, if you're wondering, does the staircase loop? How is it made? It's just really long. Like, super long, that's all it is. It's not looping, it's just... Long stairs. So let's actually go to the game save while I'm going down here. Uh, once we get to the bottom of the staircase, though, the run is going to be hitting some major components that we're gonna be getting into. Once again, I still have RNG values coming up. There's going to be three more that I'm going to be aware of. Uh, especially since hard mode, like I mentioned, changes some of the puzzle values. Uh, one of them that's not normally randomized is now going to be randomized, which is going to be quite funny with that. It's actually kind of weird, though, because I think hard mode puzzles might actually be faster than normal mode, but nobody ever wants to get on track with that because hard mode is kind of terrifying. All right. Now it is time for Downpour and Homecoming and Operation Raccoon City. Pretty much I bought it for a bunch of bad games. Alright, there we go. And it was a point that I kind of like, you know, in order to run those games, I had to do it. Anyway, at this point, if I did not have a pipe, I would be softlocked. I like physical copies of games. I have a physical copy of Rule of Rose, because that's the only way to run Rule of Rose. Uh, that is why we needed the pipe. Uh, now that we are out of the well, there's that. Plus, now I'm going to do item duplication. So, by saving the game after picking up the item, I'm going to wait a moment. I don't need to actually wait, but you can see the battery dies. Uh, by reloading the game, I don't lose any time. And, hey, would you look at that? I am now back out of the room. But wait a minute, I didn't grab the key. Don't worry, it's in my inventory now. I have duplicated the item by uh, saving and picking it up. Uh, that's really one of the only allotted usages of that. There's been some other cases where you're allowed to do things like that, but I don't like abusing those too much just yet. Because there's kind of a weird fine line of what's allowed and not allowed. Anyway, that skips an annoying RNG puzzle in the game, so I can just sort of ignore it entirely. Uh, now that we're in the prison, we're going to be collecting three tablets. Uh, these tablets are always going to be in the same spots, and they're going to be like... One in the beginning I grabbed, one right there I grabbed, and the last one is going to be in another, uh, what's the word? Prison cell. Ah, uh, it's trivial, you can find out at different games, by the way. Also, as a nice message to, uh, anyone watching any of the GDU Hotfix stuff, um, I always encourage people, if you want to try getting into speedrunning, it's very open to get into. There's a lot of resources out there, there's a lot of cool, uh, things that people can add in. Um... You'd be surprised what can happen with just having a new runner join a game. Uh, recently, I joined a game called Galarians, and I led uh, that led to getting a world record chopped down by 15 minutes, because uh, I found that a certain version of the game was faster than other versions. Uh, in theory, new perspective can bring a lot of things that you're going to be quite surprised about. Also, hey, look, it was me waking up this morning. Every morning, just same scream, every time. 
So, I do encourage you, if you had any interest getting into any types of speedrunning, there's a lot of fun um, ways of getting into it, uh, rather than uh, running resources, games. Pick a game you like, there's a lot of them out there. Uh, honestly, I've kind of been desensitized, unfortunately, um, to horror. I don't really get nearly as scared as I used to. In fact, normally when I do casual games, I'm like, oh no, I'm spooky. And I kind of just joke about the whole thing, because now I'm kind of, uh... There's a word for it. I think desensitize is really the best time. All right, so now we are in, and we are going into the labyrinth. Not White Day, a labyrinth named school, but a regular labyrinth. Okay, and now comes my favorite part of the run. I... Get to grab a few items, a first aid kit, shotgun shells, and a pistol. Release some bullets. I'm going to reload all my guns, because they don't reload automatically. And I'll be equipping the pistol. Now, my favorite part is I get to check Twitter. Or I get to, I don't know, take a selfie of myself. Oh, hey. Cloudmark thanked me for being on the show. I get to retweet that. See? I get to be on Twitter during this time. There you go. That's what I do during this time. This is a standard elevator ride. And this is going to be a lot of, uh... What's the word? A lot of build-up for what's to come. What was the last movie or video game that legit scared me? It was something stupid, I don't remember what it was. It was something really dumb, though. Seaman. On the Sega Dreamcast. That game. It was Cloudmark who vibrated my phone. Alright, now we are out of the labyrinth. It is now time to get down to a lot of business. First things first. I'm on hard mode. I didn't get the rifle. I am rather weak right now. I need a weapon. If you start on the left part of the fork in the road, uh, you'll be entering this path here with kind of like a loop and this special room. Uh, this room is going to have the great knife, more like the great wife. And yes, really Seaman. My son died in that game and it made me really scared and sad. Now that we have the Great Knife, I am able to go back the other way and take the other uh, directed path. Uh, this is going to be leading to a box with faces on it, and you're supposed to like turn it a certain way to get the room going. Now, on any percent in normal, this is going to be a, a locked solution. On hard mode, it's entirely randomized, but luckily for me, I have RNG manip. So it's going to be side up. And it's done. I have now done a randomized puzzle by knowing the RNG. Uh, the value is predetermined at the very beginning of the game, so now that I know, I can just make it through here very quickly. This is kind of why I think it's faster, because in theory you can get like a one turn, sometimes you get a three turn. And that's going to allow me to get some pliers. Now, I've always thought it kind of weird that you have to use pliers on some wires when you have a great knife. Meaning, it's not really all that great, is it? It's like, just the moderately okay knife. Because like, watch, these are wires. Why, why, why can't I cut these with... The Great Knife. Anyway, now that we're going further forward, you might be thinking, hey, why did you care about the pistol being out? So, we're entering some really tight hallways, and in these hallways, the enemies are going to be uh, getting in my way. So, when we get down here, uh, it's going to be uh, almost impossible to pass the upcoming guy. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot him back about six times. He should start running forward after that, like so, and there we go. I'm now past him. Uh, I don't really care about pistol ammo anymore. I no longer need pistol ammo. Uh, we are no longer using the pistol for pretty much the rest of the game. Uh, unless I get, like, bodied by one guy. But it won't be a huge ability. There we go. And now we're going to be building up to one of the hardest boss fights in the game, Abstract Daddy. Uh, Abstract Daddy has a very small fighting room, and you're just like protect Angela, and like there's pistons pumping in the walls, very claustrophobic and terrifying, and it's a really tough fight. Luckily for me, I don't have to actually do it. I'm going to game save past it. Oh, hey, look, I beat Abstract Daddy. He's done. Okay, GG. He's done. All right, now we're on the blind arsonist puzzle, except on hard mode, it's the blind counterfeit. Luckily for me, the counterfeit actually is the best answer. It is right the first rope. Uh, there is a one in six chance of being any of those ropes. Uh, the first rope is the best rope, and I got best rope. Uh, I know this because of the RNG manipulation from earlier. Abstract what? Daddy. Like, you know, 
like the song Gone, Daddy Gone by the Violet Femmes, like that. Or there's a lot of people call other... That's the actual name. It's Abstract Daddy. That is the actual uh, name of that boss fight. No, not, not Abstract Dad. Abstract Daddy. It's specifically Abstract Daddy. You gotta put emphasis on the daddy part. Alright, and now we can finally meet up with Maria. She was behind a jail cell all the time, and guess what? We found her. However, she's dead. Oh no, parking lot died once again. Who would have ever guessed? I can't believe it. Uh, now we're going to be approaching the Eddie boss fight. Someone asked earlier, is the Great Knife for Eddie? That is one of the reasons for the Great Knife. Uh, the Great Knife is going to be an immensely powerful weapon and will pretty much be entirely used in the end game. Uh, we're now going to be going down the hole and we're going to be going into this fight. Uh, the Eddie fight can go a variety of ways. Hopefully it will go well. There's also a dumb cutscene that I like to play during this, and... For Valentine's Day, I, I might... I, I'll probably play it. <laughs> but we need to take care of Eddie. So let's see. Yeah, I get out the Great Knife, and what I'm going to be doing when I know the Great Knife fight is I am going to be holding down the aim button, and I'm going to be bashing him in the skull with some manipulation here. I'm, getting I'm rolling up my sleeves, Eddie, getting ready for the fight, what are you doing? and what I'll be good, don't you like? worry. He always busted my balls. Alright, so the way Eddie's gonna work is I'm gonna aim the great knife, he might hit me, he might walk away, that's fine. I'll wait for him to walk away, and then after a few counts, I'm going to slash, I'll hit him in the skull. At that point, I'll wait for him again, same routine, he is now going to return, and I'll slash him in the skull once again. That was two slashes right in the skull, Eddie is now down, and we're gonna be entering part two of this fight. Part two is much, much harder. The way part two is gonna work is I'm gonna hide behind the meat, and Eddie is gonna start beating his meat here. Now, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna start slashing Eddie with the great knife. Um, by getting him stuck in this position, he's going to keep slapping the meat, and I'm just going to keep wailing on the great knife. You can see I'm not getting hit, I'm doing a ton of damage. Um, it looks like I got some bad RNG if he walks into me, uh, that's perfect, and Eddie's dead. Perfect fight! Also, James is now surprised that he's murdered a human being. Say goodbye to Eddie, he is now dead. Fun fact about the Great Knife, by the way, immensely powerful weapon, however, I move really slow with it, so I want to actually change weapons whenever I'm doing that. Now, dumb fact, because this relates back to a category earlier called De uh, Great Knife Only, if you're in the boat and you have the Great Knife equipped, the boat will move at the speed of the Great Knife, and that is the dumbest thing you'll ever hear. Anyway, on PC, um, you don't have to actually do the boat mechanic. If you hold, uh, I usually hold W and D until I see the light, and then I only hold W. And then, straightforward. It's really easy to do the boat. Alright, with that, we're approaching the final boss fight, the final dungeon, whatever you want to call it. There's many definitives of what you can really do here. But we are definitely hitting the uh, hotel, which is where all the action will be happening at this point. Um, getting a lot of the hard mode fights took a lot of time to get truly done. Uh, the Eddie fight in the past, you'd use shotguns, you try to just great knife them. Uh, that's one of the best strats at this point. Uh, no, we don't take Eddie's gun. We don't need it anyway. We have the great knife. Uh, and then also, I didn't really mention this earlier, but I play on controller. Um, sometimes I'll go to keyboard when I need to, but usually controller is the move to do here. Alright, so first things first, we're in the hotel, there's an item outside for the final puzzle of the game that you grab right there. Now, we're gonna be doing a very, uh, unique glitch. It's not super unique to, like, you know, games, but to Sonic 2, you don't see a lot like this. Also, I'm gonna slap the piano. Also, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy uh, Speedruns in the Crypt. It's been a blast being able to run the show for, uh, I think over a year now, so. Scare you? For anyone who has been enjoying it, thank you. Anyway, really quick. I'm going to turn off the light, and now we're doing something called Out of Bounds Glitch. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the uh, Two Dark Burrito map. I'm going to break the, break the load, and I can run upstairs. Uh, I'm now going to be up here. Uh, let's go. All right, so I've now gotten myself through the wall, and I'm going to be running out of bounds. I'm on keyboard right now. I'm holding W or forward this whole time. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for two loads. The first load is going to be a randomized load right there. The second load is going to be a door. Once I hit the door, I'll be holding down A and S. I'll be moving bottom left. And I'll be tapping left uh, and tapping down. I want to kind of keep it level with this door. And then at that point, I am now back in bounds. 
So, what does this save? Uh, I do it, you can, it's not really hard either way. I do it on control for most of the game. The only things I do um, on keyboard are the out of bounds and a few other like minor things. Also, I use a PS4 controller, but that's preference, really anything works. Uh, the out of bounds skips though is normally this part of the game, you'd go into an elevator and this elevator would be like, oh hey, you have to get rid of all your items and it's supposed to be a scary section because there's enemies down here and you're defenseless. All the enemies can slap you. But I have all my items still and I'm able to make my way through here. And I'm able to get everything I need back here without having to, uh, you know, return that elevator. So really what this is skipping is it's skipping a mild walk to a room and an elevator ride, and then also the walk back to that room. It is a surprising amount of time save. Also, I went the right way and then the wrong way. Please, thank you. The boxes can be weird. Also, we're saving the game very often. You can take a wild guess how many saves I probably have. I'm probably having 2,100... I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on. Probably having something like 2,170. That's my guess. Also, look, delicious, delicious light bulbs. They're canned. Also, for safety purposes, I'll be grabbing a lot more health because the final boss can get a bit dicey. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but we're approaching it. Also, even though I have the flashlight still, I have to do the light bulb because this doesn't, this doesn't work unless you have the light bulb. Like, the game understands that you shouldn't have the flashlight, so it won't work even if you have the flashlight, which is kind of funny. Anyway, we're about to be hitting our last RNG puzzle of the game. It's going to be a briefcase with like a 1 in 18 or a 1 in 19, uh, you know, chance of getting it right. Uh, there are a lot of odds, and the odds are not good for me because it's a 1 in 19 guess. Now, I'm going to guess it's uh, town. More like I know it's town because I've manipulated the RNG already. So if you've been keeping up so far, I should be right on this. Let's see. Once I go to the store, we're right now be going into the briefcase. Also, sometimes going to mouse is going to be more efficient. Like right here, I go to mouse because it's going to be faster to click. Anyway, uh, the answer is town. See? Town. Town. I get it. Uh, that is a 1 in 19 shot. That is RNG, it's just we now have the ability to manipulate it, and that's how much the run really has changed. Back in the old days for RNG manipulation, I would actually brute force that, and believe me, it was a pain. And it is actually, however, those are just the model. Anyway, we're now going to be putting in all the music boxes that we gathered. Not the battery, the boxes. And after the last one, I'm actually going to save the game upon playing it. That's going to let me go closer to the door, and then once the cutscene plays, I can just be right at the door. Uh, we need to grab the key, and I speedrun over 120 unique games that are all either horror or horror adjacent. I say horror adjacent because I'm not really a stickler to the genre. Horror is a very, very broad genre, and it's okay to have a variety of things. And it is. It exactly is. How much hours are on PS2? Eh, not really that much. It's kind of just more boring in all honesty. Anyway, there's the plot twist of the game. It's VHS. Blockbuster. We're not going to be entering the final stretch of the game. We're approaching the final boss fights. There are more than one. Uh, the path we're taking is going to be using the IGT and just kind of going through as little rooms as possible to kind of make it to the ending. Uh, it's more just less running, meaning I have more time to save here. And then we can go to the elevator that leads us back to the bar. Also, a fun glitch you can do is you can actually just game save and you can walk out of the elevator. See? Uh, I can't move while uh, not being able to see like that, so... Yeah. Also, my definition of horror is it has to be intended horror. It can't be anything that's unintended. Did I play already seven? Yep. Intended is the keyword. A lot of games that might be weird weren't really intended to be scary, so they're not really scary. A game like Catherine was intended to be scary, which by Catherine's a lot to be horror. A good example, Superman 64 is not horror, it's just bad. Other genres don't accept their failure. Accept failure. It's okay. Horror does it all the time. That's why I ran Nightcry at AGDQ 2020. It's why I'm a very big fan of the Oppel block. Oppel games are fun. Enjoy them. Alright, so now it is time for the Pyramid Head fight, and I am going to play this very safe. I'm going to play this very safe right now. 
So I'm going to be going over to the ampule. I'll be using that item. Oh, hold on. Uh, okay. Hardest fun holding into speedruns play homecoming. It's time to go. What's gonna happen is we have the dual pyramid head. I'm gonna run to this corner. I'm gonna turn around and get the great knife out. Now, I'm gonna be pausing the game. That is going to allow me to go back into tank controls. Uh, this trick only works in tank controls for some reason. I don't know why. So, what's gonna happen is I am going to aim at one of the pyramid heads. Uh, not this one, the other one. And what I wanna do is I want to get a wide swing. What this is going to do is that's going to attack and allow it to bounce off the walls. And this is going to do a ton of damage to Pyramid Heads, and that's going to allow me to get immense, you know, keep them stun locked and do immense damage. Uh, this is going to end the fight very quickly and make it very trivial. Also, Metroid Dread is probably horror adjacent. Metroid the whole is. I wouldn't play them myself, but I respect them. Alright, the fight's not done, and now I plan on keyboard for the rest of the run because I'm going to be on uh, tank controls. Uh, it's not going to be smart for me to swap back because I can actually do a trick uh, that's pretty easy to do if I'm in tank controls right now. Also, the pyramid heads dropped eggs. You know, that's what happens. One moment you're a man with a triangle head, the next moment you've dropped eggs. I like eggs, they're pretty delicious. Alright, Twitch chat, GDQ chat. Type, what is your favorite way to eat eggs? Mine, I get a sunny side up egg, I eat the whole thing in one bite. It's delicious. I also like scrambled. Also, we're gonna skip our wife's text. Mary? We're just gonna run all the way through. Kids? I also need a game save during this, we're just gonna kinda bug it a little bit. I you some flowers. Flowers? In addition what to that, I don't wanna trip on the flowers? wall, so I need to make sure I skip already. through this room. Mary, I can still trip at the very end of this. There we go. All right, now really dumb glitch. Um, the game wants—I mean, it's, it's dumb because what we can do. The game wants you to be thematic, so if you try walking up the stairs, you'll see he does this like pause. Uh, if you do this barbershop quartet walk, he'll just go like, "That's all, folks," and like strafe up the stairs. Um, this is really only used on hard mode uh, traditionally. Most runners still do this glitch, but there's a better glitch you can do by staying in directional or 2D controls, and that will allow you to um, kind of abuse the walking uh, without having to go into tank. All right, let's start getting the Maria ending, and now we're ready for the final boss fight. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get up on the bed and get the Great Knife out, and I'm going to be slashing her with the Great Knife many a times. Uh, what I'm looking for is I'm looking to swing at her, uh, at her whitest heart. Uh, I get flop moths, I just have to kind of eat them. It's a little bit RNG right now. Uh, so on the widest arc, I will then begin to swing. Uh, counter attack to do a damage spell. And now I'll heal. Uh, go back to the bed. Uh, the reason why I want to keep looking at the bed is because if she sees me in the open, she'll try to choke me. Uh, this way, I'll prevent the choke entirely, and I'll be able to keep getting the damage up. Uh, this is the final boss, and I bet you're wondering, why use the Great Knife? Why not use another weapon? Uh, the Great Knife is the absolute hardest hitting weapon in the game. Uh, there is no weapon that is going to be more efficient than this for this final boss, assuming you can get all the hits. I can see blood, that is an amazing stuff. Uh, and every time, I'm getting the widest swing, that's good damage. Uh, turn back around. And... damage? No, that's enough. It's fine. Alright, moths. Eat the moths, you are eating the moths. Okay. Wide swing. Good hit. And she is down. Time will come up on the final hit of the game. Uh, actually, I should say the final time screen. Uh, there's that, and we're almost done. Uh, we got the Maria ending, so I'm going to be holding down escape. Uh, that'll bring me to the ending. And I got a 45 10. That was my old PB, by the way, is the funniest part. <laughs> Like, I PV'd recently, but if I didn't PV recently, that would, like, I think on speeder.com, that's my current time. Like, that's quite literally a tie of my current time, technically. Because I PV'd, but, yeah, also I got 2232. Uh, that's not a bad time, 4510. Uh, that's quite literally tied with my speeder.com time, so. I hope that you all enjoyed Silent 2. It is probably one of my favorite games to run and one of my favorite games to showcase. Uh, let's say I got a 55, which that was way underestimated. I thought I was going to take like a 110. I usually make it safer. Probably because I show more funny cutscenes. So, uh, I hope that you all enjoyed this. I hope that you all had a good time. Uh, I have been Ikdysis. Um, you can find me pretty much on everything under Ikdysis. Uh, Twitch.tv Ikdysis. It's down here. 
Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, all that jazz. Uh, I, I do a lot of my own speedrunning on Twitch. I do a lot of, um, you know, videos on YouTube, both with explaining my speedruns, such as I do with this, and I also make some, like, video essays talking about different speedrunnings and different horror game speedruns. So I hope that you all enjoyed that. As well, uh, that was our last run of the night, so thank you all for watching Speedruns in the Clip and this lovely episode about love. Um, it was definitely uh, fun to be able to show off this game, and it was fun to have other games on as well, focusing on love. Um, as always, I guess I'm introducing myself as the host now. I'm McDysis. You can find me on things like Twitter, Twitch, all that. I run these shows pretty much every two weeks traditionally. I uh, find spooky games, and usually there's a theme that kind of combines them together. So with that, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and or night, and we'll be finding someone to raid. So, uh, we're not going to be back in two weeks. We'll be back in four weeks. I think in two weeks it's Frame Patals, so we're not going to be doing a show during that time, but we'll be back after that. Uh, anyway, have a great rest of the day or night. We'll be finding someone to raid. Thank you all for watching.